I'd like to welcome uh, everyone to the February 17th Bryan City Council meeting. And the first agenda item is to approve the minutes of February 3rd. So moved. I'll second. Approve. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Kuhn. Yes. Kuhn. Yes. Kuhn. Yes. And the second, second agenda item is the accommodation of the police and fire department. Good evening. Good evening. We don't often get to bring people to city council <coughs> about the good things that we do, but tonight we're bringing Mackenzie. Go ahead and turn. Say hi to me. This is Mackenzie. She's a dispatcher. You don't normally meet our dispatchers, but you hear their voices. You call 911. You don't receive the face, but you hear the voice. Mackenzie's one of our dispatchers. We had an incident on January 25th uh, in which she received a 911 call, and with her uh, knowledge of dispatching and taking the time to listen, she heard some things that just weren't right and made sure the officers got out there. And it happened to be a sad issue. The person uh, had committed suicide. But Mackenzie had stayed calm with some of the stuff that she heard. Um, would bother most of us. Uh, would not be able to talk on the radio. Uh, Mackenzie was able to keep her composure, continue to talk, and deal with the officers with what they needed to get them the people, the um, apparatus, anything they needed. Mackenzie was able to do that and not get all frazzled. So we would like to thank Mackenzie for a job well done and the fact that she wasn't complacent, she did her job, she kept calm and then afterwards dealt with it in a proper manner and spoke about it and did a very good job for the city of Bryan. So we'd like to applaud her on her job. Thank you, Mackenzie. Mackenzie, we're very proud to have you here. Thank you. We appreciate it. Agenda item three is the door discussion. Bob. Yeah, for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm Bob Golding. I'm current president of the Chamber of Commerce. We've been involved in this process. And to the best I'm able, I'll answer any question that you guys have or the public has, or however you want to do it. Well, at this point, why don't we kind of stick with council? I, I have one. Um, I have two things that I'm concerned with. I looked at the map, <clears throat> and I think it's an awful big area. I would really, I don't understand why you have it coming down Portland Street when that's all residential. Now, I understand you tried to keep it as square as possible, but I go out in the summertime, and you wouldn't believe almost every time before I mow, I'm cleaning up a beer bottle or a pop can or somebody's trash that they've thrown out in my yard. And I don't know if these people on Portland are going to appreciate that when there already is, there's no reason to have it on Portland Street. Is there any way that that can be cut back? My second question is, I'm the same on the other direction. Has Eagles been contacted and asked if they want to be involved in this? And if not, why can't we cut it back to the west side of Main Street? Councilman Uris, I believe that's actually about 10 questions, but I'm going to try to address <laughs> them individually as best I can. Um, why is the map big? Because it's a discussion point, right? We're, we have to have something thrown out there to talk about. And a square map is easier than a gerrymandered map that looks like a Congress district in New York or something, right? Because it's less signs for the city, it's simpler. And to address your question about residential areas, bluntly, um, I've been in cities that had, not even Doris necessarily, but Chicago has you know, a more relaxed open container law than Ohio does. and. Residential areas are actually not a bad thing to have in the sense that you can have block parties. Presumably, if you petition the city to close a chunk of a street or an alley, you might actually enjoy being able to do that legally. 
So I'm, this is not a hill I want to die on. It's not even a hill that I drew, right, <laughs> if that makes sense. But if I have a choice between coming in before you with a tiny map around downtown, very gerrymandered around every place in it, or a big map, I'm going to start the discussion with a big map. And if you look at the map, yes, we talked to the Eagles. And interestingly, between the core area and the Eagles are a number of commercially zoned properties that are for sale at the moment. And in my role right now as chamber director, or sorry, chamber president, I want to look at this map in terms of where could you drop more businesses? Where can we use this as a place to get more businesses? And so I will argue, frankly, that I believe the map should be as big as I can get a majority vote for. And I will be disappointed if we come with a, a map or ours or anything else that's unanimously voted on by council. In my mind, that means we didn't do our job. Like we didn't advocate for future business and existing business as aggressively as we should have. Going to another question, litter. Um, we're not the first people to go through this process at all. And this is, and I will tell you this, I was late to this process in some ways. I got asked to help and it was already rolling. And when I got asked to help about this, my first thought was this, when you have this thing for the first couple of weeks, it's probably gonna be a legal disaster. You know, people are gonna screw it up and not understand it. They're just gonna be carrying around their case of beer, drinking, whatever. And I thought litter would be a problem. So I called both um, Defiance and Napoleon's law directors, and I actually talked to both of their clerks, too, and they process all of the misdemeanor crimes in their city. And littering has not been a problem for either one of them. And I guess I would say that we're not the first people to do this. That doesn't tend to be the problem. Littering is a $500 fine. It always has been in Ohio for the last 20 years. It's still a $500 fine. Um, it's the bigger crime over open container, frankly. And I'm willing to assume that n the citizens of Bryan are no dumber or more, no more criminal than the citizens of Napoleon, Defiance, Grand Rapids, Ohio, and so forth. So if they haven't had problems with it, I think it's a, for lack of a horrible analogy, a noble experiment we should do. Are you willing at all to cut back on the map? Sure. This, you know who determines the final map? The people at that table. Okay. Right now. The, you, it really does. And like I said, I would be disappointed if we cut back the map in the hours to the point where everybody was happy with it because that's a bad political compromise. Thank you. So, Judy, we do have a defined C3 district that Bob mm -hmm. and I talked about Saturday and Brian Whelan created a map for it. Would yeah. you like to see that on the I screen? Did. Yeah. Brian you did gave see me it. one. I, you might want to put it up for, yeah, for the people out here. And so the red... And explain what that is. Sure, yeah. so the red is what is proposed by the DORA team. Is that fair, or chamber? I don't... Fair enough. Okay, yeah. and then the blue is our C3 district. C3 core. C3 core, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Years. Yep. What, what is a regular C3? Do you have a map of that? All the light yellow. So right. basically this area, this area. So it's, it's less defined. It's kind of that scattered area I think you guys were trying to avoid. Blue is obviously the residential area. So you can see how much residential is in the red proposed map. C3 is, it's yellow, but it doesn't. Yellow on mine. I guess my next thing on, on this area deal is I would like to hear from some of the people from Brian and how they feel about that before I would I think commit that's very to anything fair. one way or the other. And once again, I would go back to that if we pick a map and everybody in the map or everybody in this room is happy with it, we probably didn't do enough in my role as promoting business and so forth. So, to your point originally, is the map sacred? No. We had to throw something out for public comment and talk about it. And 
frankly, square or square-ish is easier because oh, I understand every that. place you have a, a border, we're going to have to put signage yes, and so forth. I understand that. Uh, well, I'd like to thank all the people that worked on this proposal. Um, I both appreciate the amount of work and effort that goes into a proposal um, and appreciate those who are constantly looking for um, opportunities to make Bryan a thriving community. So I, I want to start with that. Uh, I do have a number of questions um, that, to be able to make an informed decision, um, that's going to be informed to the to the point of community benefit and uh, like Judy um, it'll culminate in I think there's a number of people that we need to hear from as well but some of the questions are the following and I think they're going to go relatively uh, quickly uh, on page three it states for the economic and cultural betterment for excuse me um, for the economic and cultural betterment of the business residents and property owners within Dora I understand the obvious advantages to the business with liquor permits. Have you surveyed the businesses in the Dora district that do not have liquor permits? Yes, uh, to varying degrees. Remember, all the businesses in the Dora district are theoretically represented by the Chamber Board. Okay, and they have a, a role in common on that. And I will say, having spent the last four years in the Chamber Board, it's rare for anything to be unanimous about anything, and they were in favor. And speaking for the the businesses that do not have liquor permits we cribbed most of this from defiances because theirs was good and well drafted and uh, credit to their city attorney on that um, they have a system of stickers and I don't know if you're familiar with this but if you walk through downtown defiance now if you do not have a liquor permit you can put a red sticker or a green sticker on your door provided by their chamber or so forth and it's interesting because I talked to the city attorney and he's like, there's a number of businesses in defiance that got a red sticker immediately and then came back to get a green sticker because they did think it was in the interest of their business or having seen this float out that they would prefer that at least under some circumstances people could bring in a Dora cup. Is it a one-way street? No, it's not. You know, if Building X in downtown Bryan right now is some kind of business and they don't want anything to do with this, they don't have to have anything to do with it. If they want something to do with it later, they can. And so it's not a, that's something that can be changed at their decision at any point. So the, the answer that I got from that, and just for feedback for me, is that yes, they were, and for the most part, not unanimously, but for the most part, were in favor. Yes, I think okay. that's fair. Right. Um, and, that's and what I'm looking for is fair. <laughs> yeah, in, in like, you know, uh, we're not running a Gestapo here, so we didn't like make them all, you know, pick a side right now on sure. this. Instead, we, we made it very available to them that we were doing okay. it. Have you surveyed the property owners in the Dora District parcels as currently outlined on the map? No, I have not. And I'll tell you why. Because the chamber is a small organization and cheap and we don't spend money if we don't have to. Uh, under ORC we are required, or you guys are actually required, uh, to provide public notice of this and I am willing to commit that if council requests it we will send a notification to every property owner in whatever map okay. we've all agreed on. Okay. That's good. So what you're saying is, is no, but not, uh, and not until the final map is drawn so that you can focus a little bit more. Sure. Gotcha. Fair enough. Like, I'd like a compromise on, it, like, I don't know what I would have sent them yesterday. Sure. Sure. Um, what is the Fountain City School that's located across from Father John's? What's, what's, what have they indicated? Uh, they've been asked. Um, as I recall, they had no particular problem with it. Yeah. yeah. The, like the principal or administrator or whatever? Yeah. Um, once again, it's their area. And uh, maybe to preempt the follow-up question, same thing with Bryan City Schools, other than Bryan City Schools did have an interest in that if this passes, the Arts and Ed building being across from Myros and nearby to Cora and other establishments, they might consider um, 
asking the school board to, under certain rules of, of, of their picking, allow people to bring in wine and so forth. Yeah, but based on what I read, when they bring in wine, it can they bring it in from pl some place that's already been opened, or must it be like a bottle of wine and then they can open it in? No, yeah, it has to be in the official Dora Cup. Um, that's oh. a it's a pertinent question. It's a weird one. So Ohio has three tiered liquor distribution and. Um, essentially, it's supposed to be cradle to grave as to how this works. And within a Dora, you can't get a bottle of wine or a growler or some giant container. You have to have the official Dora cup. Okay. So they would have to get the official Dora cup from Myros, walk over there, and watch a play or so forth. So they could bring that official Dora cup into... If they made it their own rules to do it. Uh-huh. In okay. which they appear to be somewhat interested in whether they do it or not. I, that's beyond me, okay. right? So, um, uh, for page three, um, paragraph four, the the chamber is going to be. Actually, I have two questions here. Is the ch I'm, I was kind of confused about the daily cleanup as to who's responsible for that, yeah. and it's also question ten. So I can kill two birds with one stone. On page sixteen, help me to uh, rectify. Uh, uh, to, 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 to. No, that's a different one. So okay. stick with this Sorry, one. Sorry, <laughs> on, on the daily cleanup, um, this has evolved because, uh, frankly, our first thought on this is that every establishment in the Dora would be required to have trash cans at each entrance and so forth and keep them clean. An official trash can picked between the city and the Chamber of Commerce. And then, given some guidance from Kerry, frankly, on this, many of them have city trash cans already. Um, I did not personally know how many, uh, you guys have a map of the city trash cans? Yes. It's on this. The Isn't green are yeah. the city and the purplish brown are county. Okay. Uh, and I apologize, I cannot get this to spin. The it's fine. Uh, the, the point yeah. is there's a lot of city trash cans and I didn't realize that until now. And I think uh, a rational compromise on trash frankly is that if you're a Dora establishment participating in this as is outlined I believe in the draft that you have in front of you the city empties your trash can on Monday period and if your trash can is overfulling the rest of the time that's your problem as a Dora establishment to empty it and we will negotiate out how that works, of course. I mean, that this is something that I hate to quote Nancy Pelosi on that because we're in a Republican county, but um, you know, we got to pass it and see how it works. We got to, we will have to figure out how that works. Okay. You know, the, my goal, I guess, is that they will empty their trash can at an appropriate rate that it never becomes a problem. If it does, we have some enforcement means. They being the Dora Liquor Establishment, I just want to be clear. Yes. Okay. Um, so, how does uh, how does Napoleon and uh, Defiance handle that? All right. I said I was going to do this. Um, we have an expert from Napoleon here. Can you come up here and help me? Because I have no idea. I'm Joel Miller. I'm the executive director of the Henry County Chamber in Napoleon, and we were one of the core groups that put Napoleons together. Uh, we were extra concerned about, there were two main issues that we were concerned about. One was trash and one was the security right. of the area too. So the trash portion of this, since that's the question at hand, the trash portion of it, we had a six month review period there where the city had committed to if, if one of the local merchants, you know, outside at the various different uh, city trash cans that were out there in the district that was named, if they noticed that those were overflowing, they would contact the city. The city would, on their normal route, dispatch somebody out there to, to clean that can out. We have, in the year and a half to year and three quarters that it's been in effect, there's not been one extra pickup that's been needed. We haven't seen that amount of trash. We haven't seen that amount of volume that's been needed for it so far. But that was the that was the, the ordinance that was put in place, and then that was reviewable six months, or it was a, the first one was a, a quarter review, so it would have covered this first summer for us, and then it was six months after that that council would review that, bring in the police chief, fire chief, 
bring in the sanitation department, bring in the merchants and say, how is this all working? Do we need to change this in some way, shape, or form? And there haven't been any changes to it so far. So that was what we came up with, and knock on wood, it's worked out so far for us nicely. Okay. Yeah, so on, on what I'm getting from the trash is, is that it's going to be both the responsibility of the, the permit holder, permit holder and also the city as it relates to wherever those green sure. little things um, were. The city is already picking them all up on Monday. Exactly. They're going to have to pick them up on Monday again. Right. Uh, I just wanted to understand those. I should take two, John. Sorry. Most That's fine. Most of the cups, most of the Nora cups for us sure. uh, have gone into those individual trash cans right at the entranceways sure. to each of the, of the different places. People okay. will come back or if they're on their way to Okay. Very helpful. Um, what a, moving right along here. What about the courthouse square? Is it included in the Dora? Won't the commissioners need to agree if there's drinking on the courthouse lawn? Sure. Also, the during the jubilee and car shows on the courthouse square, won't that take the county commissioner's approval? And even if it does, something that's kind of sticking with me is during the jubilee. I'm, is that a, a right, problem? All right. Once again, nobody apparently can ask a question. It's one question. You, That's right. <laughs> uh, I'll try to break them the apart once. the best Is I can. This when I say welcome to my life. All right. So, <laughs> That's all right. Let's talk about the courthouse square for a minute. Sure. Okay. Um, it is the pur purview of the commissioners to decide what happens on the courthouse square. All right. Period. Um, I'll tell you what I think should be done. And what I think should be done is that either simultaneous with the inaction of Adora, or immediately after that, the commissioners should visit this issue with public comment at their meetings. And I honestly think they should actually participate in the Dora. Napoleon does. I don't believe it'll be a disruption for them. I believe that the courthouse is a beautiful facility and has a beautiful lawn, and it has a city band concert and a number of other things that would be good events to be improved by having a Dora. However, you can ask the commissioners, my opinion matters for nothing with them. And they may well not do that, or they may not well do that immediately. They may not do that in a year. And this is a, it's a unfortunate thing <coughs> if there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you a couple quick things because I, you know, talking to the public on this, I had heard the, the concern that if the Dora included the courthouse square, that it would be disruptive to have a jury trial and be able to look out the window and see people sitting around the fountain drinking beer and so forth. Um, in a past life, I've sat in a courthouse in Indianapolis and probably one other one that literally out of the window you could see a rooftop bar it was there all the time i don't believe it'll be that disruptive for what it's worth um, it's their decision and if they don't enable the dora on their end we'll be in the position where yes if you walk on the courthouse lawn with your dark cup it's illegal it's a misdemeanor under ohio law this is a, frankly, a, a discretion issue for the police department as to how aggressively they want to handle that mm -hmm. and for the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. And I can't answer how they'll handle it. Mm -hmm. um, what about the concept of it being interrupted during the Jubilee? Jubilee is a hard question, okay? Because I'm of two minds on that, I really am. Uh, I believe it'd be possible to set up a Dora that did not function during Jubilee, mm -hmm. even from, from the beginning, if you wanted to. I know that Napoleon, I'm not gonna tag him in quite yet on this if I don't have to, uh, they've suspended their Dora for their festival. I've also been to a lot of places that didn't suspend their Dora for a festival. And I guess I'm kind of an optimist and I would mm -hmm. sort of look at this where, why don't we see what happens? Mm -hmm. We can always change it. Um, mm -hmm. Well, my response would be then start low and go high. 
uh, start with a suspension and then see if it doesn't really have, in our opinion, much of a significance to do a couple of days. It just, I think there's going to be issues since, I understand festivals, got it, but the Jubilee has habitually, in the last 60 some years that I've attended it, it has habitually been more family, kid driven, and I just didn't know how that would mix. You, you've answered my question, I appreciate it. The next one is a four-parter. Okay. And, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll do Does I'll council do own a whiteboard? I mean, yeah. it's just diagrammed out. Yes, but I don't think it comes off the wall of the conference. Okay, all right. We'll try. So this is a, do you have any data kind of a question, a data from similar sized towns, and you may want to uh, tag into Joel. <clears throat> do you have any data from similar sized towns indicating any A, increase in new business brought into their downtown Dora districts? Yes. Um, We've heard from a couple of people from Napoleon and Defiance, uh, citizens not involved in their city government, that it was very good for business and attendance at festivals and attendance at events. I know Defiance has this food truck event that they do on Fridays, and it's been very good for that. Yeah. But, and so um, I do not believe with the limited data set that I have, it's ever been an economic detriment to any business in Adora in our area. My, my question was, and you answered probably a little bit of the second and third one. My question was a new business brought in. Doctor, if we, if uh, ABC Warehouse or whatever wanted to come to get sure. that example. Okay, uh, yeah. let, all right. This goes back to why we have a big square map that we're throwing out for discussion. I believe it can bring in some businesses and I, I don't have here tonight, and I wish I did, somebody from Wedco to, to talk to that issue. Um, I believe much in the same way that Brian has two industrial parks that are set up to encourage business, having a big Dora with some places that are still zoned commercially that you could drop a business in, if it's on the fence mm -hmm. and We'll pick on Buffalo Wild Wings for no apparent reason, but I'll pick on them. If they were on the fence between dropping a new restaurant in Bryan and dropping a new restaurant somewhere else, if they were in Adora, they'd be more inclined to do it. Yeah. So you believe the answer is yes, but you have no data really to support that. Would that be a fair? I I'm trying that, to be fair with I, my I think, summation. I, I think it's fair, though I think that... Um, Your tag man wants to come in. I'll let him in. <laughs> you may, you may want to. You may want to relent. Just so you guys know, I'm every night. So yeah, I'm we just met. <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you that we had one. We had a fire in one of our anchor corner businesses at uh, used to be the Brick and Brew, uh, which was a a pub restaurant, uh, burned down the summer that we instituted, or maybe the summer before we instituted our Nora, uh, and the the. People who purchased that building said that they would not have purchased that building if they did not have the option of this Nora district because it made a difference to them. It was another sales point. Uh, they have it's a smaller type of restaurant bar, and if they can, you know, use some outside seating, we implemented outside seating at the same time as our Nora, so that played a part of it too. Okay. But but to have a different facet of business offering was attractive to them. We've also had another bar restaurant that is currently in, in place that has said we, we, our bump in business was enough to keep us here for another year in the location, in the Dora. They would have gone, or in the Nora for us, they would have gone elsewhere in the city of Napoleon, but because of that, they chose to stay for another four year period lease wise. Uh, in that spot to see how it went and and to see how it goes, but yeah, the the brick and brew one was was direct data for that. Have, and, have you also seen an expansion of existing businesses downtown? Yes. Yeah. No, well, there, no, other non-related businesses, you mean? Um, no, that's not. I didn't. Okay. That was not a good question. Or I mean, just an expansion of revenue for the businesses yes. that have it. Thank you. They would say yes, I believe, for the most part. Uh, there, there would probably be. We have six at the moment, and seven with the one that's that's reopening this year. I would, I would guess, and it's been a year or so since I've talked mm -hmm. to them on that and really kind of called the information mm -hmm. from them. But I would say that at least half of them saw a large increase in the warm months. That's this time of the year, yeah. no, there's All nobody right. that uses it this gotcha. time of the year, but. That, well, that's at podium, I have sure. a quick sure. question. You're pointing out all the good things about mm -hmm. this. 
what, give me one problem that you've had with this since you have put it in. I would tell you either way because I, I told Dan the same thing. I would tell you the negatives of it because to me it's six of one half dozen of another to me because it hasn't been an overwhelming, wow, boy, that made a difference in our downtown district. It's been a good thing. But if somebody came and said, we're shutting it down tomorrow, the businesses would, would be okay and things would be fine. But I would say that there has not been an issue with this. And we were afraid of a lot of different issues. There haven't been. I would say the one issue that I'm disappointed with, with is that more people haven't used it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of a half cop out with it. But we have not seen a trash problem. We have not seen a security problem. We have not seen a a vagrancy problem, if you want to call it that, some you know falling down in an alley, disrupting businesses. Ours start after uh, our district starts at four o'clock in the afternoon, so most of, and we're not a Sunday either, so we don't have uh, you know any time where they'd be re, you know in interacting with a school or a mm -hmm. church or something like that, which we have in the district. Um, so we. We haven't seen any any issues along that way, and I would be completely honest because it'd be easy for everybody here to call up the Napoleon folks and ask them mm -hmm. and find out. We really haven't seen it, and and it's my job to be eagle eye on that to say if this is turning out badly for these businesses, we want it out of there. So, how really, about an Judy, increase in migrating to Napoleon? Have you seen an increase in people migrating to Napoleon for? In other words, if I came. Because yeah, we have door. actually. Well, we that, have. That's what I want yeah. to know. Uh, we, and, and one of our locations is a craft brewery that they brew right on site there. We've seen a lot of people come down from the Toledo area for it. He does a lot of marketing into that, which spills over into some uh -huh. of our other regular locations. Flat Rock Brewery is yeah. ours, and he's a distiller now. So Thank you for that distinction. That. I was yeah. talking about permanent migration. Oh, permanent migration? No, okay. I would say that. But, that but hasn't increased traffic is your point. Yeah, increased traffic. Yeah, of visitors coming okay. in, yeah, we have seen an increase okay. in that. But no, people moving to Napoleon because of that, no. Okay. We haven't seen that at all. Um, oh, and it's kind of with that also seemed to be, to me, that over the years, that most people choose a town based upon jobs, schools, hospitals, Absolutely. and events. Absolutely. More than ability to stroll with an alcoholic beverage. What's Absolutely. your response? That, that would have no yeah. effect on whether somebody would choose to live in Bryan or Napoleon or Defiance or okay. Archbold. I don't know. I'm not Sultania. asking you to set up yeah. questions. I don't Oh, no, I, no. <laughs> so, I mean, if we all think of that, I'm not moving me. somewhere. Yeah, I'm not moving somewhere because of that, okay. you know, at all. So, no, we haven't seen that at all. Though. Okay. Thank you. I would like to address that just for a sure. tiny second. Sure, sure, sure. Um, one of the things I do in my day job, um, which there's several people here from there, uh, is we hire college students and as engineering interns and this is something they're interested in i actually i i had to talk to two previous ones in the last couple of weeks and their concern about they had a choice between warsaw indiana and brian was that brian was not as fun of a town and they got over it but i believe that for a significant part of industry it would help us recruit people Okay. It, it, and like to his point, yeah, nobody uproots their entire career because they can drink a beer in the street. They don't. If I'm trying to get a college kid to come here, that's something I can use. Okay. And if it attracts businesses that open up that are a cultural type business, sure. That's that part of the plan. Yeah, okay. I, I would agree with what Bob's saying. And we get we get a ton of co-ops and interns for Campbell Soup, uh, and people have you. We see them. I see more of them downtown, but did they choose the Napoleon, you know, the Napoleon factory? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's the case, but okay. well, I would know that more. Than if it's a, if it's a flip mm -hmm. thing, like I absolutely compete with people from Warsaw. It's another medical device center that they anything that makes it sound not like um, a punishment, a purgatory of going to the Midwest okay. helps me. Okay. Um, what's your rationale? Uh, on page 14 for the number of days and hours of operation seven days a week 12 to midnight what was the thought behind okay, that? okay um i'll tell you very honestly i had a lot of reservations about that originally and i i do as well and so i <laughs> i talked to the defiance's law director about this in great length and uh -huh. and they don't have sunday hours 
as an example, Napoleon has more restricted hours. And I asked him bluntly, you know, should we not have Sunday hours? He's like, no. The simplest, easiest thing is to have consistent hours on every day so it's always the same rule every day of the year. And he's like, if you have to modify from that, modify from it. Yeah. But don't ask for anything other than consistent hours. Yeah. Well, you can have consistent hours that start from 6 and go to midnight, right? If that is what the majority of the people at the table over here yeah. want us to do. No, it's just a question. I would be happy to do it. Okay. If it's, a, you know. I understand consistent application. You certainly, hey, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can go to Brian and drink from 6 to midnight on Adora, but on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, no, no, that, that would not make sense to me at all. So I appreciate that. I, it's just, I understand what your, what, what your thoughts are. Um, on the hours of operation. Has the police chief and street department supervisor, I do not know this. They're sitting back there, ask them. I haven't talked to them. Has the police chief and street department supervisor weighed in on the proposal to date? They absolutely did last Monday. We had a meeting with them. Okay, um, and how that, what was the upshot? The upshot is they have concerns. Oh, okay. They have the same concerns everybody in Napoleon and Defiance had and turned out not to be true, so. Uh, mostly track, mostly security, trash, that would be a security, security and yeah. trash issue. Yeah, well, absolutely. It's um, fair if you want them to come up because I think our, ours is unique and we don't know. What, I'll do it, Chris. Sorry, um, we don't know what the county is going to do, and so Bob, you had mentioned like you know it depends on how you want to enforce it. Well, they don't have an, they don't have a choice. They've taken an oath to enforce the law. If they see it, they can't just turn their back. This is a question for Rhonda, not for me. I'm not licensed to practice law in Ohio, but I believe that in Ohio, when you are a sworn law enforcement officer, that um, you have no discretion over certain things that are mandatorily reportable or felonies. Um, certainly, Brian PD has seen me drive 28 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. They have some discretion. I think there is some discretion available. Whether they or the city government wants to use that is a question beyond my pay grade. So I would, I would ask Rhonda to answer whether they have any discretion on misdemeanors in Ohio or not. That is true, Bob, but you know that a speeding ticket is different than somebody walking in front of you with an open container on property that is trespassing or that is not a door establishment. So I don't think any police officer is going to turn their back and not cite them. Okay. Fair enough. And I actually, like, I've, I've had a consistent position on this with regards to the commissioners that we all want to have a good relationship with them. I do, personally. I, I like them all. Um, I believe that we also paid for that property, and I believe the right thing for them to do is to probably participate in the door as it exists if we have one. Can I move on? I don't yeah, have to. I don't know I, where we're at in your 18 questions. Well, we're, actually, we're on number nine. Okay, let's um, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, but there's only like four or five left because you had multiple parts of some of the others. Um, page 14, uh, could you please elaborate on 5.1D, which is basically referencing the city's right to suspend for security reasons? Who is it council and under what circumstances? I mean, I don't, I don't know what that meant. I, I wasn't sure what that meant. I guess I saw this as the mechanism by which you could change the rules for the Jubilee. It's um, a question. Um, John, I can, I can add to this. Sure. We actually suspended the door for us. Okay. The, ch the chamber did okay. uh, for our rib fest because our district is right smack dab in the middle of the, the Dora district. Uh -huh. And we have a separate liquor license for our selling beer in our thing, in our area there. And we thought it would be a very conflicting for the liquor license problems. Because once you start to cross liquor license, you, you get into trouble. And we mm -hmm. did not want to risk our, sure. our license or the, the organization's liquor license that could do it. And so we, I think we've been the only one that suspended it so far in, in the time that we've had it. The others are all for it because they don't, they don't offer it. Um, but that is, that, and who else in the point could suspend it besides chamber? 
anybody who anyone anybody so, so if you city council had security concerns. city council makes that decision we okay. had to petition council to say we would like to Thank close you. it they could have said no okay. to that but it's city council who has that discretion and we we had to develop that because it wasn't originally in our ordinance so they amended our ordinance to add that in and and i told them from the beginning hey look guys we're gonna we're gonna want to suspend this because i have concerns for us and them uh, with it during that time. No one else has chosen to do it la yet, but there there will come one, I'm assuming. And we have a number of other, our cruise-ins are downtown, arts events. So anyone that was having that, you know, say you're having, you're closing off a street in there, okay. the church, having a church festival, they could choose to do it if they wanted to. They okay. would just have to petition the council by our ordinance then to do it uh, okay. within the time frame as usual. That's very helpful. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. Um, page 16, help me rectify ORC 4301.62 with a current liquor and entertainment establishment practice. That, that uh, maybe that's not clear enough. The ORC 4301 states that you cannot, uh, as I read it, you cannot take a container opened or not into another establishment and open yes. it up. Yes, this is absolutely a, and, a, and, a and fundamental. Is there something part. currently going on? This is this is fundamentally. It, I actually dislike this part of Ohio law because it's wasteful. But that's a whole other thing. That if you go to one establishment, we'll just call them A and B. Uh -huh. We're not going to pick on anybody. Okay. You get a door cup. You have to leave with your door cup, cup and your alcohol. And if you go to another location, you can't bring in outside alcohol. This goes back to the three-tiered distribution in Ohio and cradle to grave control over alcohol. So this is true on a number of levels in Ohio that you cannot take alcohol from one establishment into another one. So that practice is no longer occurring? I am not aware of any liquor establishment in Bryan that allows you to take alcohol from one into it. In, into another entertainment center area? Into, into another licensee. Another I'm talking about an entertainment. Okay, no. When establishment is used in that section of ORC, it is about permit holders. Okay. To the best of my knowledge, it's, sir. John, okay. it's, it's like... I, I share it with, it's like the concealed carry. Uh -huh. that you can put a sign up on your door that says no concealed carry allowed here, or you can welcome it right. if you but want, that, if it's within the door of cup. But that, that's talking about non-permit holders. If you yeah. have a Class D liquor permit, you, you cannot bring in outside a alcohol. Clothing, a clothing store or whatever it may be, if that, if that individual owner has the sign on the door that allows that, uh -huh. you're allowed to go in there with it. Or they could have a sign that does not allow you to do it. It's their choice. Which so if I if I get a drink from Teresa, that I'm trying to understand this, and you're doing you're very helpful. I'm not pursuing anyone. I'm just trying to think this through. So if I go to Coors and Teresa gives me a, a beer in a door cup, in a door cup, can I go into the theater and drink it? If yes, you can the if they allow it. So if the theater has some sticker, the, like you were yeah, talking, has a sticker, then which, you can go in. Which the chamber will provide. Yes. But you have to be a door district first. Yes. Yeah, I got the answer. In the door district, yes. I'm good. You couldn't take it out to Walmart. No, I, I'm, I'm good. I don't want to pursue that any further. I'm fine. Thank you. And, but if you, took it into, if you took it from Cora's to Myro's, that would be illegal. You have to throw it away. In Correct. The you have to throw the cup away. away. No, you that's yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which the license facility thing is kind of somewhat unfair, in the sense that like, why does that matter? And you could go into another business that doesn't have a license, but it's Ohio law. Three tiered distribution is what it is. Okay. And this one I think has already been somewhat been answered, but on page sixteen it appears as though. For 7.2, private property owners' owners only recourse if someone is drinking on their property is to call the police. Well, it's not their only recourse. They could get into a altercation. Like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not not, not yeah not not a good thing. Um, so to call the police, how much increase in plat police traffic have the doors town seen? None. 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 Uh, and I, I, I can I can tell a funny story about that from Defiance. 
that they said that um, the first couple days they had it, they were burning up extra gas. They could see this driving around <laughs> looking for problems and nothing. Like okay. their actual volume of cases didn't change. We, we actually had in our ordinance that there could be off-duty security that would be hired at cost by the merchants and things like that. Uh, that was never needed when they reviewed that. It's still in there that if they choose to do that, they can do that, but it hasn't been needed. Well, there haven't been any issues. That's in our draft as well, and that's always been a thing, mm -hmm. right? That if you have a public event and, yeah. and you want to hire off duty yeah. police, you can do it. How, how will Dora customers know the Brian Dora guidelines and rules? Is there like some kind of a handout that they Yeah, get? I mean, that's. I've tried to get some good advice from people who have done this before that, yes, there will be a handout. Okay. And there will be stickers and. We have uh, posters of each one of the establishments as well. Going back to why did we ask for a big square map and why did we ask for big hours? The simpler we can make stuff, the easier it is. Okay. And I'm just coming down to it, just about ending here. Is there um, a problem with having Doras in concert with special event permits that we have now? Is that a, you see what I mean? Yes, I mean, okay, so I'm, I'm familiar with getting special event permits. Okay. Um, and is there a conflict? No, they've become a permit holder. Okay, so then you, imagine this, uh, the community theater gets a, a legit charity beer permit. They pay 50 bucks, they fence off their parking lot, they're having a party. Now they're a permit holder. Right. Before that, they could let anybody walk in with a Dora cup at their discretion. Once they have that, they're a permit holder that you're gonna have to get rid of the, your Dora cup before you go in. Sure. So okay. is it a conflict? No, not really. It, it's a, it, it is of the concerns when you get a special event permit, a tiny one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not as extensive in in scope for sure as it be relates to time or area. I, I get that. Um, just the last two are actually ones for the mayor. Are there any estimates on additional police or waste disposal from the street department on a cost basis? If that's not a fair, if you haven't had a chance, that's fine. The answer is that we don't know yet. Yeah, I would have no idea. Honestly, I think your biggest cost going into this is frankly signage. Okay. And I don't know if Napoleon would confirm that or not. So is the city providing the signage? Is the chamber it's providing? The city is providing the signage. Because I saw them the other day, they're like red, right? For us, they're white. Oh, they're no, white I'm white sorry, white I was talking about Defiance. Yeah. My bad. How would you know, right? <laughs> Defiance is like they're red. Right. That's the signs on them. They're yeah. red, okay. but then they're, they're signs if you're not allowed to go into a business, they're red. Okay. If you're allowed to go into the business, they're green. Okay. Those signs will be provided by the chamber. We will provide the, the stickers, stickers. and we will provide the a handout. The but, district ones were provided. Yeah, and the district ones, um, you know, we threw a draft of a logo up in here. It's because we had to have a draft yeah. to start I talking. And start. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, it's up to the people sitting at this table to figure out what the signage okay. you want to have is. Well, the last question I have, you can applaud if you want. Um, have you talked with other city attorneys regarding uh, Rhonda? This is for you. Have you talked with other city, not, I know you have, Bob, thank you. But have you talked with other city attorneys regarding increased legal exposure to the city via Doris? No. Is that maybe something that would have some value? Well, sure, she sure. can. Okay. In fairness, the department heads did not meet with um, Mr. Golding when okay. Mrs. Bergman until last Monday. All right, no, that's fine. I'm good. I just want to have the question and go forward. I, I, can I add something sure, to that? Sure. Um, as you're very well aware, all of you, because you have to deal with the city's legal exposure, um, sovereign immunity is a thing in Ohio, and it is the opinion of your insurer that this comes down to dram shop law, and okay. it, is, it does not expose you to additional legal exposure. Okay. okay. No, that's actually helpful. I actually understood that, which is kind of sick on my part. But um, 
my initial thoughts, just initial, which maybe you have no interest in, but I'm gonna share them, because I think some of them are what I heard from Judy. I think the geographic area is too large and encompasses too much residential area, and the days and hours of the operation are too expansive. Seems like we do better by going a little more slowly to work out any local issues we may have first and then determine the value of community impact by expanding the area and time frames, which I believe can be done. I believe you can expand. Sure. Um, so, you know, you know, are you part of the solution or part of the problem? That's the, the answer is uh, hopefully part of the solution. Um, I do have some general thoughts, which I don't need to share tonight. I'm more than happy to on a redrawn uh, district area. Uh, that I think uh, cuts out a lot less residential areas, um, but still kind of picks up pretty much all the groups that you had in there. Uh, and then I was thinking in terms of a different time of the year that was predominantly, uh, Joel, what you were talking about. I don't think I understand the concept. Doesn't mean I can't. Doesn't mean people agree with me. That's all good stuff. But right now, I don't think I understand the concept in Northwest Ohio, why we need to have it all year long. It seems like April 15th as a date through October 31st as a date would be a little more of the significant impact for businesses and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure I understand, and maybe I'm not a winter drinker, um, but I don't think I understand the, the value and the business value of that. I need to hear more about that. So I'm not against, I am not against uh, the DORA. I am just really more, um, interested in seeing a little different footprint. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Once again, you have a multi-part question. It well, it wasn't a question. That's actually, or, those, say, are actually those are actually my comments. Yeah. 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 And, and I'll address them separately. Um, you got to remember, I'm here as the voice of the business community, right? So I'm going to want a big map and big open hours and try to draw it into sure. business and make it tasty and invitable for them. The map is not a hill I want to die on. Gotcha. Okay. Hours, also not a hill I'm going to die on, but times of the year might be, and I'll tell you why. Um, Brian did have the Etch-a-Sketch drop at New Year's for a while. I've been to Port Clinton, and they make a ton of money and get a ton of interest in the things they do in the winter. So uh, I guess I... I would not make this into some kind of Groundhog Day to Labor mm -hmm. Day type activity because mm -hmm. I think that I think there's a number of things that you, know, you, can, you can cover those not to be argumentative, but you can cover those with special events also you can. without having it 365. But um, let's call it my second or third job in life is to argue for a big map and the ability to sure. have events. No, I, believe, <laughs> I me, believe me, I understand your position and the position of those people who have liquor permits. I think we need to be a little more responsive to all the, the community and their interests and needs. And that's where these questions came from. So even if, even if the geographic area shrunk to what I think it should be and the times should shrink to what I think it should be, I still would need to first hear from non-liquor permit downtown business and residents, which apparently we've had the, uh, the non-liquor ones already, as well as the police and city street manager. And then I'd like to hear from ECHO, who just did the Educating Communities on Healthy Opportunities, uh, which I think assisted Williams County Health Department, just their general thoughts um, since uh, the alcohol consumption in Williams County has uh, grown proportionately. So I'd just like to hear from them first. That doesn't mean they're going to have any necessarily significant impact one way or the other, but I'd like to hear from them. I, I think That's it's a very thought. fair statement on this. Is that well, thank you. I, I try to be fair. I want this to be a public process, and I want the two extremes to be unhappy. I really do. I want, I want somebody that owns a liquor permit to be like, why wasn't I in the map? Why are the hours what they are? You know, you're screwing me. I, I want them to do that, and I want elements of the community that think the whole thing is a horrible thing. Right. They'd l maybe like to go to a black and white world with no dancing level to be angry. Sure. I think we have to find a compromise and we have to try to move the city forward. Yep. That's where I'm at. Thank you. I'm, I, and thank you for, for uh, go ahead. accommodating me. <laughs> Rick, did you? I, I was just going to say, I, I, you heard me voice my opinion on the size of the map. Sure. I 
don't like the Sunday deal. I wish we could do away with that, which you said you don't have a Napoleon. And we only have one establishment that's open on a Sunday. Okay, all right. Um, and the other one is, I, but I disagree with John on the the year. To me, that's just really going to screw everybody up because they're not going to know when it starts and when it stops and how many people are going to rock around in the winter time with a beer anyway. You know, if you're out on the ice on that, you deserve to fall down. So, um, well, <laughs> interesting thought. Yeah. So, to me, I don't think you're going to have that many problems with it in the winter time. So that doesn't bother me one way or the other. But I do want to hear from the voters and Brian. I want to hear from you people. What are your thoughts on this? Are you for it? Are you against it? You know. Well. I mean, for this us is to your, make the right decision, yeah. we have to hear. I mean, when you, you're done, there's a hearing for public concern. I, really like, I would love to get off up. this podium and let somebody else but talk I, about before it. You do, <laughs> so, before you do, I, can, I, can I have some logistical sure. questions? Of course. Are, were you finished, Judy? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so one, we've discussed that I only have this in a PDF document. So if it comes before council and council really has some wanting desires to change the map the times the locations sure How of course we, do we can do that we can do that um, okay um the question i don't know the answer to and i really don't is that i know that i want it to be a compromise that hurts both ends of it right nobody got what they wanted mm -hmm. and so if you came to me tomorrow and you're like i think the map should be x i kind of feel like saying the map should be somewhere in the middle unless you've pulled all of council and you have a sense of where they're at um so i kind of feel like we're going to have to do this one more time with two maps up there and or three maps or 10 maps i don't know and and argue that out because i'm not going to just change the map without some more feedback about it personally like I, I feel like that there might have to be several generations and you know I understand politics is slow and I really I know that there's a perception that I don't but I get it that let's say you let me sit down for a while and a bunch of the public comes up and some of them I imagine are going to argue for big maps some are going to argue for little maps maybe tonight at the end of this we'll have five maps and have to come back and talk about it again that's kind sure. of I'm just trying to figure out pragmatically if we go through these public meetings because I think tonight is not the only one that should I, it should be, be multiple ones. I want available this to the public. At some point, if I'm given the direction to do one thing or another because the law says I have to present this to council, like I can't change the document, and that's fine if you are going to do that and it's going to be I, what council is requesting. I have no problem giving you a changeable document and coming back and hashing it out another time. Because the truth is, anything in this document that would be passed by council, I mean, we can email to the chamber before, like with, on the Friday before the meeting, so sure. you guys can verify that I haven't just like dropped the bomb in there because obviously that's the concern and, for whatever and, reason. No, the, the concern is this, that I want this to be a public process and I, I want there to be some choices presented and what was passed by the chamber board and signed off on is our proposal to start with okay and I would much rather come back here in two weeks do the same thing over again and flip up three maps and argue about it flip up three sets of hours and rules or whatever they are and argue about it and I really do believe that we're, we're going to come to a compromise that I haven't heard anybody tonight say no. I've had a lot of people tonight say they have questions, they have concerns. We're all not going to get what we want. I just, I, like, I believe that's where we should be in this process. You guys can modify the map. We'll give you a live copy of the map, live copy of the document. That's the next draft or the next five drafts. We'll do it. And then the other thing I wanted to ask, because it's not really been identified, but it says in here that the DORA team would have a security plan review four times a year with the department divisions of the city. So who is on the DORA team? It's appointed by the chamber, whoever they decide to serve on it. Um, if you guys have some guidance on that, well, that can be changed, certainly. Uh, you expressed a concern that you wanted uh, somebody from the street department in that. Well, that was when you were going to put a bunch of trash cans on the square, and I really felt, and, and you guys have 
address that issue because I really felt like we did not need to become trash city. And if sure, someone became a Dora district, we didn't just need six trash cans out on the square. So you guys did well. We're, let's just look at this that. thing right now for a second. It's a living document from this point on that we presented something in public. And if you want to put it in there that the Dora team is composed of X, Y, and Z people and identify them, that's fine. I feel like that probably. I guess I assumed the Dora team was already because you had talked about the Dora team meeting and having. Right, there, there's documents. two kinds of things. There's the people that sat around and tried to figure out this thing. All right. And then there's what we're going to do going forward. Okay. It's what we define it as. Okay. So there's no defined team today. Sure. Right now, there are people that are involved in this. But I guess personally, what I think it should be is a couple of people from the city, a couple of people from the chamber, and whatever else we think needs to be on it. And that's a, I, you know, I'm not going to be well, offended think, how it's structured. Okay. And I think that the piece for the city was, I mean, you asked for all of my department heads and I to be in a meeting with the DORA team, which is fine, and I think we're happy to comply with that if this would go through. I was just trying to determine who was on the team right now. It's a Good. work in progress. Good. Okay. Sure. And it's at your discretion. The people sitting at that table make these decisions, not me. I'm nobody. Yes, if Bob's ready to go have a seat okay. and take a breath, I think public comment would be appropriate, Mr. Long. We have, yeah, remember on public comment, please come up, state your name. And then we are asking, this is a public comment, not a conversation, it's not question and answer, it's not a public forum, it's your public comments, okay? So, and we try and keep that to five minutes. Dick. Oh, if you guys want me back, I'll come back. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> but you well, can take a breath for now. While oh. Dick's coming up, I do have a couple of comments. Uh, the first one is, on the border, I, I saw a map early on uh, that I didn't like because it was cutting through some areas that were not what I considered well-defined. And uh, um, the second map, or the one that, that was proposed tonight, I personally like better, even though it, it has my house in it. Uh, I'm fine with that. I don't expect hordes of people to be sitting in my front yard drinking beer. Uh, well, that I don't know. We have an iron fence around it. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> we can always electrify but the that if we want to. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, the streets become defined borders, and that, that was one thing that I liked better about mm -hmm. this map versus one that I had seen in the past. Um, by the way, I want to thank Joel for taking the time to come here and helping sure. us with this tonight. Um, and I just want to say, as far as, as what Joel had to say, I spoke with uh, some people from Defiance that were heavily involved with the development of their door, and they echo everything that Joel said. Uh, basically, the idea of the door for them was they have a big picture plan, and this was a small piece of what their plan is. And so, is this going to be the answer to everything? No, but it is a piece of the pie. And um, as far as the times of year, I, I think Joel kind of answered that for us in that it takes care of itself. When it's cold out, people really don't participate. Um, then so what's the point, Joel? Then what's the uh, point of having- Consistency, consistency, uh, as it was said before that, okay, when does it start? You know, when does it end? You know, those kind of things. It, and, and honestly, okay. to keep it open that if somebody wants to do a winter pub crawl, right, then you can do it and not okay. have an issue. You don't have to come to council and say, can we put it in especially for this weekend? Okay. Things like that. Um, but it, it really, time frame has policed itself for okay. us. Thank you. Sorry, Dick, I didn't mean to. Oh, no problem. <laughs> uh, my question is, well, Rich, you and I are, and Rhonda, we're, we're part of the residents. Mm -hmm residential portion of that Dora map. I haven't heard anything about, well, how does that affect me? I mean, what is that? If you and I are out cutting our grass, we gotta have our beer in a Dora glass or what? No, nope. how does that affect the residential people inside this map? No, let, let them answer. Because <laughs> yeah, we, like, we really know. shouldn't be answering it. It's a public um, comment. Okay, so, <laughs> frankly, nothing changes. Um, if you're on your own property, you're doing your own thing. Um, the only thing that I could see changing at all is if you were in that area and you wanted to walk back with a beer from someplace you could. And 
if you did want to put on some kind of community event that was not on your property, I'm not talking about you had your friends over for a barbecue, you would have some cover to do that. And, you know, this is way above my pay grade, but I've seen it done where you shut down a street or an alley and have a community party or something. And then right now, you can't go drink in the alley with your friend across the street, whether unenforced or not. But this would let you do that. Oh, okay. In a dark up. In a dark up yeah. and so forth. Oh, okay. I just, I hadn't heard anything about the residential part. So. No, it's a good question. Um, Bob, is there a caveat in there that if they do not want to participate as a Absolutely. resident, and they would put a sign? Is that correct? No, they don't need to put a sign. If, unless well, you would put a sticker on their house? No. Unless oh, you that's why you said sticker. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's for a place of public accommodation, right. a business in it. Um, your own house is your own house. We didn't change anything about trespassing law or anything of the sort on this. And that's something they really focus on. That everything like that you could think of bad that could happen to your house in the Dora. People are throwing beer cups in the yard. People are in your yard that you don't want to be in your yard. People are urinating in your yard. Anything bad you could imagine, like New Orleans style stuff the crime they're committing still is on the books and it's a bigger crime. And this is a good round of question, not for me. I, I know nothing about Ohio law. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that almost all of those crimes are bigger crimes than open container is right now. You still have them at your discretion to use. And Carrie, the individual addresses are in the ordinance yes. of the ones that will be covered. And, there, and I would assume for you guys, it, it is for us, there are no residential addresses in that so those there are there are there are a lot everything there are quite a few blue <laughs> it's a little bit more in like here yes mm -hmm. well they're not in anything yet we're in well they're in the proposed dora right. document right that, which if they want to take advantage of that and have a block party that's to their advantage if it's not it's other public comment no I'm David Swanson. I uh, own a business in town that employs about 75 people. I um, control to some degree about eight storefronts all around the square. And I was, uh, 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 I spent six years on the hospital board. Uh, so I uh, see some of the concerns of, of Bryan, Ohio. And uh, a vibrant downtown Bryan is a very important thing for a number of reasons. And, and it seems like in my experience, I, I wander all over the world. I see lots of places. I wander all over the United States. And a key to a vibrant downtown, whether you like it or not, is booze and food. Plain and simply, it's booze and food. So if you take care of the booze and food, you have a chance at a vibrant downtown. And, uh, and this is just not Brian. This is the world over. A lot of the world's commerce, I'll tell you, gets done at a nice table with a nice glass of wine or a nice bottle of beer. Mm -hmm. So I just think that it's really important. And you've got some people in this room who have spent a lot of money uh, developing businesses for Brian, downtown uh, Bryan, and they're good businesses, and they're putting their money where their mouth is. And it just seems to me as I have no idea whether the door is a good thing or a bad thing. But uh, sins of omission are a heck of a lot worse and more dangerous than sins of commission. Because if you don't do something, you never get ahead. If you don't do anything, you're just relegated to staying static. And I can tell you, the city of Bryan is not staying static. There are changes going on that none of us know about. So you've got to get in the habit of, you've got to be doing things, you've got to be commissioning things. You've got to take some chances. You've got to worry, you, you can't worry so much about all the damn beer cans on the streets. It probably won't happen. But anyway, so why is this important to me? And let us say the hospital. And it's a question of recruiting. Uh, 80 employees, I would say about 7% of our employees live more than 50 miles away. We are increasingly, we are increasingly have to go to places like Chicago, uh, Buffalo, Ann Arbor, and so forth to recruit people into Bryan, Ohio, because there simply are not the people in Bryan, Ohio to do these kinds of jobs. And every one of these people that we have brought in keep a foot in the other town 
Our Ann Arbor person keeps, uh, keeps her house in Ann Arbor. Our Chicago person lives in Chicago, goes home uh, on the weekends and so forth. We cannot get them to come over and live, make a commitment in Bryan, Ohio. Uh, at one point, we had five people that drove daily from Toledo. I would have loved to have had them move into Bryan, buy houses, increase our tax bases, and so forth. And uh, we just can't get them to do it. The hospital is an absolute perfect example. They are trying to recruit doctors to come to Bryan, Ohio. The doctors, by and large themselves, are extremely impressed with the facilities, the medical facilities that we have here in town. Who mixes the deal? It's the spouse. It's the spouse who wanders around Bryan, Ohio and sees absolutely nothing. I, 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 that's a bad statement. There are things going on in Bryan, Ohio. But it's the spouse that mixes the deal and the doctor goes somewhere else. These people that we want to bring to town, they are educated and raised in metropolitan centers. And so it's a hard thing to get them to come out here. And if we have more and more things going on in this town, more activities, it, I just got back from Conus, Lithuania. And they had a nice street there, open container, wintertime, cold in Lithuania. There were hundreds of people out there with baby buggies and all wrapped up. It was a nice, wonderful experience. Okay? Over at, uh, at Cora's now, it's hard to find a parking space sometimes in front of that place between the, the renewed theater and Cora's. It's a wonderful thing to see. It's horrible to go downtown on a Friday night or a Saturday night and see not a damn thing going on around there. So I don't know. It just seems to me as though you need to take a chance. You need to, to, to give some of these people that are putting out a lot of money for downtown Bryan, you got to give them something. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any others? <laughs> um, I'm Verna Grocki. I live on the corner of Beach and Wilson, which is part of the historic district. Um, we pick up a lot of trash every day. We have a lot of people walking by and we do pick up beer cans and pop bottles and everything. So we have a concern about the littering. Um, as far as the Dora, I'm not against it. I mean, my mom lives in Savannah and they have a very successful Dora there. So I just don't think it needs to be on Wilson Street. I would like to see the map a little bit smaller. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ashley. So um, just because I wanted to get a better understanding of how the doors worked in other communities and their initial concerns and their initial issues they may have had. So I had an eight hour car ride to make a whole bunch of phone calls. <laughs> um, so I called the Defiance Visitors Bureau. They are the ones who headed up their DORA and just kind of their in residents' initial concerns, again, were littering. And also, why do you want to create a drunk district? That seems to be, littering seems to be a top concern for all of the businesses <coughs> and residents that when the door is being brought to them. And the other thing is, why are we creating a drunk district? That obviously is not the point. We're not trying to have a party in the street. We're trying to attract people to want to come to our local businesses and support downtown. And so I also spoke to the police chiefs and the fire chiefs of Defiance and Napoleon as well, just to see if they had any increase in crime or you know, public intoxication, any of that. And they, didn't, they haven't had any increase in anything. And uh, the Napoleon, uh, police chief he said even on like his second and third shift um, officers they don't even really notice anything either the people that are participating in this are the people that participate in business after hours or the uh, oh the alive after five those are the kind of people who are participating in these it's not the guy that's gonna go sit at the bar for 13 hours and want to walk around belligerent and cause a bunch of trouble so I think it's Think about the people who are really going to be participating in this. You know, mom and dad want to go up to the car show and grab a couple glasses of wines and walk around with the kids and then go home. I mean, it's not like we're trying to create a, a drunken district, I guess you could say. So, and looking, I also tried to find negative things online from anywhere that has done it, and I couldn't find anything. I mean, 
and everyone has the initial, you know, what about the littering? What about the increased crime? I mean, it just, it doesn't seem to really be an issue. So that's just Good. my two cents. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comments before we move on? Clerk Treasurer's report. Um, just oh. Mr. Metz notices also for no. the charter discussions. This is public comments. He wasn't at the last meeting. Oh. Yeah, this is public comment time and then it's over. So we're good. Go ahead, Laura. I'm not going to thank Gary. I know. Mr. Trippy? Dr. Trippy? Sorry. No. Come on down. My name's John Trippy, and uh, I probably fell in love with Brian about 50 years ago when I walked through and saw the beautiful Christmas lights on the square. I'm not a Dave Swanson, so I've been around the world that many times, <laughs> but I've done some traveling. The places I've loved the most, their county courthouse squares are bare of grass and kids are playing soccer and you name it everywhere. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about the trash idea we're talking about. People are not going to be carrying around a six-pack bo of bottled beer, drinking and throwing it around. They have a cup that they purchased. And so when they're done, the worst they can do is drop that somewhere. I'm going to tell you, I'm against this square. I think that we need to think way beyond this, because I believe we need a trail from around Father John somewhere, up through Corus, up through the alleyway to the old 1867 train station. And you should be able to ride a bicycle or a walk with a beer all the way up there and back. We need to have a city that brings the young people in. We talk about bringing other people in. I will uh, absolutely shadow what David said. I've tried to bring in surgeons for with practice with me for years. And who wouldn't want to stay here? My wife doesn't like it there, mm -hmm. the closest. Well, this is one way we can welcome the younger people, the 22-year-olds, the 27-year-olds to come back. Hey, we have an area, an area where we're very receptive to uh, families and just enjoying life in general. So I'm all for the door and I'm for more than a door. I need to put a handle on that thing to get to the 1867 train station that'll be another microbrewery. So I'd like to think even beyond what we're doing here, connect the historic areas of our city. Yeah. Thank you, appreciate Thank you. it. Okay. We ready for the clerk's treasure report? Council there's, there's another okay. in the back there. Oh, okay. Sorry, we don't have a good view of that. No, we don't. <laughs> just uh, just going to let you guys know that was pretty inspiring because you guys are, that's pretty cool. You guys are here to just show your support. And I think that it's pretty decent to see this place filled up with people that are very interested on this matter. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I, I'm a musician from the area. I have played country rock the last five years. I'm also a brew, um, a brewer in Hicksville. Um, I'd really like to develop more uh, local events in the area as far as um, bringing new music acts to town. Cora Brew House has really been awesome sponsoring some of our local events. We're bringing an 80s rock group from Fort Wayne for the uh, Jubilee and um, I've worked, in, I've worked with a, a decent handful of productions in the last few years, and I've noticed that a lot of times, um, you know, if uh, music and, you know, a nice adult beverage goes pretty hand in hand, or like a baseball game, you know, with a nice beer and, you know, whatever. So I, I've just noticed that um, it's hard to retain, it's hard to retain people when there's not, um, there's not, I guess, um, perks like that. Um, so I, I just had a lot of people come to me and say, you know, hey, if there's anything that you guys can do about, um, you know, getting like a, a special events license. But I feel like if we had like a Dora, we can um, we can bring events to even non uh, non permitted areas that may allow this kind of stuff and bring and bring uh, traction to their businesses as well. Because I mean, I think a lot of people are on board with music. And um, I can bring music to those uh, those companies as well, along with the permitted. But those usually already hire their own. Mm -hmm. So um, having something like this kind of uh, just helps promote the growth of of uh, live events, you know, community events. So that's my. I, did you give your name? I'm oh, sorry. sorry, Adam Voskis. I'm from oh, Brian here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank that. you. Yep. Thank you. Thank much. you, Adam. 
Sure. Are you going to get mad if I leave now? I am not. Okay. <laughs> you, but I'm, I would be happy if you stayed. But <laughs> before you leave, I want to say two things. One, the commissioners have not been publicly presented this document. So it is unfair to say whether they are for or against or undecided because they have not been given the opportunity to see it. So I want to make sure everyone in the room doesn't go blame commissioners for anything bad that may happen because that's not fair. Um, the other thing that I want to tell you is it will probably come up in a subsequent meeting in the future, this document. Mm -hmm. And so we are now putting our agendas on the City of Bryan website. So you may look at our agendas on Friday afternoon before the meeting to see what's on there. So if you don't see it in the paper, that's it. Everyone else that wants to not stay for the rest of this meeting may exit now. <laughs> oh, yes. Wait. Yep. Yes. Yep. Wait, wait, we have another comment. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> False alarm. Sorry. <laughs> I'm John McFarland. Um, I don't live in town, but I pastor locally. I work here in town uh, with the school as well as chaplain on the fire department. And listening to all the things that have been said, I guess I have to be the one that goes against everything that has been said. As I listen to the things that are said, everything revolves around building Brian by being able to walk around with a cup of alcohol and I don't follow that I don't understand the concept of what difference that would make and that map I sat there and I counted it just to make sure I was counting right there are nine places in the square that can have alcohol how does carrying a cup of alcohol outside of that restaurant outside of of the places where they already have the established license how does that make Brian a better place the attractions you know it honestly you think that a cup of alcohol is going to attract people to Brian that just puzzles me when you look at the various businesses that could attract people to Brian you look at the desperate need that we have for industry in this town we we need the factories we need the places that can employ a family that can get a, a mom or a dad a job that they can make a, a decent wage to be able to shop in our town, to be able to shop in our stores. But if we're attracting people by a cup of alcohol, that is something I just don't understand. I think we are missing the point. I grew up in this community from a kid. The downtown area, when I was a kid, some of you are old enough to remember what I remember. I remember we had like three shoe stores and you went in and you had somebody that actually fitted you with a pair of shoes. You had all sorts of businesses around town and then you had the square and that just had the whole family atmosphere. You have the Wednesday nights, the, the, the band out there, the community band and the people that come for that. You have the car show, you have all these different things. It's been said that if people want to have a special event, and I know that they have done this before, that they can come and get a permit for it. That's all something that's doable. So why affect a community as a whole just to allow somebody to walk around with a cup so that they got their wine, like that's going to be something special that's going to make Brian a better place. I just don't see it. I think we need something far more lasting, far more permanent, and a whole lot better than a glass of wine to walk around town. That's all I got. Thank yep. you. Nope. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think it's, I think it's a reflective of, I think it's reflective of Brian, um, that what just occurred. You can hear both sides and still respect both sides and not agree. And I, I, I've always liked that about living here. Um, that, that it still is respected. So thank you for your courage when uh, there were such spirited uh, and, and other uh, arguments to be given, but uh, it is all taken into consideration by all of us um, and, and we'll go from there as we obviously continue to evolve with this. I just have one last question. Are we ready for the court treasury report? I, so. <laughs> I tried this four times. Everyone this leave that doesn't want to stay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you.
No, 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 you got to stay. Chief, <laughs> could you guys let no, some of them down, down the stairway so it doesn't... Now there's nobody here. You got it, Ben? I just, otherwise, there's going to wait My for... My finger doesn't work. <laughs> it, it's like we burned off his fingerprint. I'm not sure. We didn't give him access well, to everything. they won't let me leave. They told me I had to stay. I just wanted to get a key fob out there so they could take the staircase and not wait for the elevator. Okay, clerk treasurer's report. Clerk Sorry, treasurer's guys. report, please. <clears throat> Council's been presented with the clerk treasurer's report for the month ending January 31st, 2020. Your motion to accept? I'll make a motion. A second. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Rick? Yes. Judy? Yes. John? Yes. Okay, the charter review discussion. Um, do you have that on PowerPoint? Yeah. Is this or no? This piece? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, just some uh, statement of some information and then. Uh, culminating in uh, next steps. I originally uh, began this discussion because I received multiple inquiries from Bryan residents asking why we have both a city council and the BPA. After attending many BPA sessions, which can uh, much consideration and listening to the feedback provided by those with differing opinions, I put forward what I believe are viable options appropriate for the voters of Bryan. At the heart of the matter, it seems as though the BPA and council have over time become two separate islands and have lost somewhat our shared purpose and defined roles that had been established through the charter. We are one city and we should work together to make the city the best it can be. The baseline question to me is whether the current dual structure is functioning optimally or if there is room for improvement. If there is room for improvement, the options I see are to either fold the entities into one or to construct bridges so there is improved workflow and communication between the two entities. If we determined the appropriate method is to fold the entities into one, I propose we honor the term limits and preserve the expertise of all members by initially simply bringing everyone into the city council. This would ensure a structure where everyone communicates in real time on the issues and we have a clear shared purpose. As term limits end, elections would determine which members continue to serve. I do not propose that we would continue to govern with 10 members past 12-31-21. Second option is if we determine the appropriate method is to keep the entities separate, I propose we improve communication through written resolution, keeping in mind our shared purpose which is to serve the best interests of the Bryan rate and taxpayers. We could establish guidelines and a communication mechanism to ensure better communication and coordination exists between the entities. Although this proposal would not reduce government, if successfully accomplished, it would help to improve a better team atmosphere to the community's benefit. I recommend as the next step that council have a joint meeting with the BPA to discuss the proposal for combining our groups as well as to discuss ways we could improve Brian's governance without a charter change. This could include agreeing on primary purpose, establishing what entity's role is comprised of for the charter, and determining concrete ways to ensure improved communication and coordination and working as a team for the betterment of Brian. I ask both council and BPA members to please begin to prepare their questions and comments and ideas for this joint meeting so that we might come to an agreement. So this is council discussion time and then... I have we'll some things that... I have been really upset today. Um, first of all, I was not here last time. I was homesick. I do like the comment that Mary made that not all council members agree with John. And I don't agree with John. Um, I think what we have works just fine. It seems like every time I've come to a meeting, there's been another something else put on the table. Well, we're going to do it this way. Well, now we're going to do it this way. Well, now we're going to do it this way. 
I think it's time to bring this up to council, bring that motion back up, and let's vote on it, and let's get it over with. Every single person I have talked to has not been in favor of this, and that is the way I'm going to vote. I, I just think it's working fine. I don't see any reason that we need to change this. And uh, I think BPA is more than willing to work with us and to work out any problems that we have. If we have to have joint meetings, go for it. But I've just, I've heard so many bad things said about council because of this. And I don't like the things that I've heard. So that's my opinion. And I have to agree with Judy on this because I have not had one person come to me that's in favor of merging the boards together. I've heard everything negative on merging the boards together, but I keep hearing that there's people who want it. Where are those people at? Because I think we get emails from and we see letters as an le editor, but no one is supporting us to merge the boards together or do away with the BPA. And that's what confuses me, and I feel the same way Judy does. Let's just end this and move on and get back to the way we were. I think the other thing, I didn't run for BPA. I ran for city council. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. Could I learn that? Yes. Do I want to? Not particularly. How many of them want to be on city council? Have they been asked, do you want to be on city council? Is that what they ran for? No. Would they learn it? Yes. Do they want to? I don't know. I don't know. If you look at what the differences on what the council does and what the Board of Public Affairs does, and I apologize for my voice, it says enter contracts, and I can't read that far away, with purchasing utilities. I said I can't yeah, read that far enter away. Enter contracts including purchase power for utility departments. Thank you. You're welcome. Council doesn't do that. The BPA does that. That's something we'd have to learn. They would have to teach us how to do that. Why? Let them keep doing it. They're doing a fine job for Brian let them keep doing it i think the other thing too um john i know you're very passionate about this but i can see the amount of hours and work that Lori and rhonda and carrie have had to put in on this and if we don't do anything with this those are hours and time even natasha uh, the mayor's secretary that we didn't need to do it to begin with so I'm just, I'm, I think it's time we finish it off, one way or the other. Rick? One thing that, that I guess I, I, I want to make clear is that a lot of what the argument that I hear is they like the way the utility operates. And what we have to be careful of is to understand that we're not talking about prime municipal utilities. We are talking about the Board of Public Affairs, which is elected by the people to oversee the operations of the prime municipal utilities and be the representatives of the people who elected them. And I, the arguments that I hear are not about what Board of Public Affairs is doing, but rather the, what the utility is doing. In my mind, if, if the Board of Public Affairs, and the, again, this would be up to the people, would be dissolved, there would be no reason for us to see any changes in the utility. It would just be a change in who is overseeing the utility. The other thing that, that I keep in mind I spoke with uh, someone who recently brought a business to, to the city of Bryan and one of their biggest complaints was the amount of bureaucracy that, and, and red tape and things that they had to go through in order to bring their, their business to Bryan and I think that is a monstrous problem. That is 100% true. Yes. And, it, and it's very difficult. I, I'm, I will be honest, with the two boards and the two entities, it is very difficult because when we thought we had the city side taken up, then the utility got involved and then there were more charges. And honestly, that's something that I think the board and the council maybe just need to allow us to have the superintendents and the department heads and, and I and the operations manager in the room and say, how can we streamline this? But the other piece is 
Council approved a BIPAC commission, so anything being sold in the industrial park must go through those meetings to make sure that the qualifications are met. I believe we had two or three of those based on building plan changes that were outside of our control, but also outside of the developer's control. Um, can we get better? I hope so. But are there pieces that are unavoidable? Also, yes. Um, but that's certainly something I think everyone in this room that is a department head, um, I'm sure the superintendents would agree. I don't think any of us have any problem getting in the room with each other and saying, how can we be better? How can we learn from this concern? Because the developer has a valid concern. He really does, there's no question. And it's not something that I will deny was smooth, but it was also the first lot we had sold in a decade. So very few people sitting in the room had a lot of experience in it. And I'm really proud that they are building and that that happened, but can we get better? Yeah, and we need to. That's, that's all right. Okay, yeah. well, that's helpful. I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but I, I agree with no, you. You're, I think it's... you're fine. You, you help to support my point. Yeah. <laughs> Jim? I, I'm still new to this, and I haven't had a lot of interaction of what has transpired between BPA and City Council. So I really don't have a, a statement on this. You know, I do agree with giving the voters, uh, you know, the option to vote on how their government is structured. I think that's always fair. But I was but. also told that's why we were voted in so we could make those decisions well so well, that's you... another point that you have to look at they put it us they put us in this position to have the smarts enough to know how to, to settle those things without putting it to the voters. sure so there's two ways to look at that too if bpa was in disarray and uh we needed to do something you know i i would go back to you know getting a charter review committee involved or we get outside counsel that deals in mergers and acquisitions because that's really what we're looking at. We're merging BPA with city council, uh, you know, and, and and go through that whole process. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm too new to this mm -hmm. and don't know the issues that have transpired throughout here, but. Yeah, my, my, I, my oh, I'm sorry. No, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. My, my question my question is, is did council read through this? Yes. Oh, okay. absolutely. No, I just yes, need I to did. know that first. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Because really the issue is the issue of going to the next of just meeting with bpa and working out some levels of understanding as to who's in what swim lane and before we start getting off on that i believe that question came up from everybody over the last year as it relates to role function who's going to do what and we just had a meet, uh, meeting uh, mary and i uh, with Tom and uh, Dick to discuss what we would be discussing at that joint meeting. And that is, you know, do we need to have like joint meetings so that the communication is better? It's those, well, but that's what, that's what this proposal is, is just that we meet to discuss that. I want to be fair to Tom to make sure, is, is that okay? To review. Tom, Tom was concerned the same way that you were, is that the end result is he thinks everything's fine. Why even talk about why even talk about, and let me finish, why even oh, talk, let you finish. thank you, why even talk about the issue of um, uh, communication or better, better communication by having joint meetings, etc. My thought is, is what's the harm of us meeting and presenting to each other, this is how we want to go forward so that we work better together, not really look at the issue of, of um, the proposal of, uh, combination i think even if it if we table if we bring that motion back up and we vote it down i still think bpa and city council should meet mm -hmm. so many well, times a year so that we have communication that. with each other i don't think there's a thing wrong with that okay well that's and really that, what I this is extremely important that's what this proposal is that's like the left hand knowing what the right hand's doing exactly that's what this proposal is on the last paragraph there but not um, just one meeting. I'm talking about... No, no, I know. But but the first joint meeting that we're going to have is setting that up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. It's all good. I understand. I'm not sure I'm communicating well enough with, with Mary that what we're talking about is having a joint meeting initially to set up do we need ongoing joint meetings? What ways can we communicate well better with each other? Do we have meetings that are back-to-back -back here? 
on Monday nights where we meet, excuse me, they meet from 5.30 to 7, and we meet from 7 to 8.30, so each can kind of hear the others, and there's some uh, economy of scale as it relates to the people that have to do both. So it's just it's just talking with them. That's all that's being proposed to here is just talking with them about that. Is is that something that we can do going forward so we can work better? I believe since I gave Tom's impression, I believe Dick's impression and mine were pretty much on the same table, which was yeah, let's why don't we have a discussion and talk about ways that we can work better. I think. If you don't mind, Dick, Dick was saying that he believes as though that he's tried for years to have a better communication and a better uh, um, a relationship between BPA and council. That's all this proposal is, is just meet with them jointly and see if we can kind of, kind of come to some agreement that we have a written understanding that this is what the roles are, our single purpose, which in my opinion, and I'm certainly uh, open for discussion on this, it seems to me like our single purpose is we were all elected to represent the rate and taxpayers in the city of Bryan. But then you still want to go on with the proposal that you that you had on the table of merging, putting, merging and no, putting them not all if, together? Not, not if we have an agreement. No. Okay. Okay. No, no I do not. So it, the, the next piece. No, I'm we glad still you have about, a motion that that we table that we have to bring up and do something. And we with. can do that if once we come to an agreement. No, it's, this is good. Thank you. The the intent is to have them come up, uh, meet with us. We have an agreement that we come to. Then what we would do is we can make a motion to no longer have the the proposal of com combination nor the third reading that we are going to continue to be separate under these this resolution of the, these agreement ideas, meeting jointly, et cetera. That is what this is. But we need more than after that and after this has all been tabled or taken care of or whatever, we still need to have more meetings with them, I think. That, yeah. That's what I'm that's what I think. I'm so that's what I'm that's what I'm saying is that that, that we would have at least I think I said quarterly and I believe Dick said at least quarterly is that did I, am I misquoting you at a see there we go so for some reason I feel like I'm arguing against this the same thing that we're all saying all all this proposal is is to us to get together and decide how we want to work better together in the future for the betterment of Brian that's what this proposal is. At some time in the next few weeks, if the mayor could get with Natasha and contact the well, BPA. I'll just contact oh, okay. Mr. Long, as acting director, directly, and we'll look at some schedules. But I will tell you that next week, for the first part of the week, I will be representing BMU in Washington, D.C. with our legislators. So, so that sometime it in the next couple of weeks. the next three weeks. Sometime in the next two or three okay. weeks, we get together and we decide, does that make sense? Oh, I, it's definitely yeah. needed. But make, I also okay. think that but if you guys go forward proposal, with that. You have in your proposal that I don't have a copy in front of me. That's right. That says you want to meet with the BPA to see if they want to merge. No, 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 role definition, anything they want to come up with, anything that you want to come up with that, and one of them is um, meeting, I discussed with them, meeting maybe uh, back to back on Mondays and, this, and the, uh, so that we could share with each other, come to each other's meetings as we want, but then we would have at a minimum quarterly meetings so that we could keep that communication straight forward and not drift apart because I believe over the last few years, there has been some drifting of purpose and role on both sides. So to assure, and I think that's what Dick and I were talking about, is that to assure that doesn't happen, what, what do you say we meet back to back on a Monday kind of a thing, or whatever day, I don't care when, but some at a time when we have like back to back meetings and then at least quarterly have joint meetings and agree with some other 
I don't know what things you're going to bring up. I don't know the things that other BPA members are going to bring up, but discuss those things that they think and we think are going to be cohesive parts to the puzzle. So going forward, we don't drift apart. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all this was. Was So what we're doing, what I'm asking for is, do, and the response from them was yes. <laughs> do you want to meet with the BPA jointly to discuss ways that we can agree to have a better communication? That's well, you shouldn't have to ask me after what I just said, definitely. Okay. So that would be so yes. I, I okay. do need some guidance though and maybe I can talk to the president of council <coughs> and the chairman of BPA and Rhonda and Lori and, and Dawn but at some point I get to be the person that builds the agenda and I need to know what you guys want to talk about in order to do that and make sure I can do that because we talked I can do that I can actually do that for you and also there's been a request that Certain pe they, they may want to add certain people, but I think we've talked about making well, sure. Well, it'll be a public meeting. I mean, so they yes. can add whoever they want. But, but, but uh, yes, but I think there was some discussion, Carrie, yes. it's mayor, about you three also definitely being present as well so that we could have that meeting together. And yes, if it's public, you're going to be there, I understand. So if we have it here if we don't have it at the utility because that's you know another discussion for another day did did anyone have an issue with the way we set up that joint meeting in the spring where we had council mixed in down here i mean i don't know how to do it where it's fair where council isn't sitting over bpa or bpa I, is able to have one meeting here and you have the next <coughs> meeting at the bpa well, it, well, so you didn't like it that way no because you guys were yeah. Not no, the I council agree. wasn't Carrie, just when me. When we had the meeting for the handbook, we were all we down were front. Yes. Right, but he was just saying he didn't like that because Kevin and Rhonda and Lori and I were up He here. didn't like the setup, and I agree. What we need to have is either round tables or where we're looking at each other. Have round tables. Well, okay. looking at each other. That's what I'm hearing that we need to do. Well, the way we had it before, we had to like crank our necks right. to talk to each other. I think what Dick is saying, and I am agreeing with, is that if we could head up something okay. like a square table set up. Do you want to move the conference tables in and we can just I don't care what we do. I do the logistics are, yeah. right. logistics to me aren't as important the as the setup so that, that we can that. talk with each other and see each other. Is, is that Dick? That's what I think. Okay. Thank God we're on the same page. Dick, thanks. <laughs> Jesus. We're confused down here. Yes. And I'll just speak for all four of us. I mean, it shut me up if I'm saying the wrong thing. Do you still want to get rid of BPA and merge B or merge BPA? Or are we just dropping that now? We, That's where we are. We are lost. No, there is no loss. Okay. If you reread this, what the recommendation <laughs> is, as the next step, the council have a joint meeting with BPA to discuss the proposal of combining our groups, getting together, so that we can discuss ways we can improve Brian's governance with the charter change. This this could agree. But without that, we're not going to be talking about that. I, we're I going to talk about the agreeing. You put the combining our boards, and what you and meant that, to say was combining the, joint meetings. Yes, mm -hmm. that was. So okay. what we're talking about is this could include agree. We would need to meet to discuss what agreements we want to come to okay. to be have a better communication. It is not going to be anything other than that. What I told, what I think I said to Dick and Mary and. Um, Tom was is that we can discuss for the few st first few minutes here's do you guys have any questions on proposal two which is the com combination I am guessing and I think I am correct that they're gonna say no we have no questions we have no interest that's gonna be the end of it next question what what ideas do you guys have that we can work better together and that's where we're gonna spend our time does that make sense is that clear? Yeah, so what happens the ordinance 46-2019? I just explain that. What, what, <laughs> yeah. okay. what would happen okay. is, well, we first need to <laughs> get an agreement. Sure. No, 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 they're good questions. We I first see. need to get an agreement that we would have, and then the next, at our meeting, when we do the resolution, the resolution's going to be that we no longer have 46-2019 on the okay. books. Perfect. And that we are not going to do a combination. Okay. And that we are going to accept resolution 69595954444. I made that up <laughs> to add some levity. It's a good number. Yes. <laughs> yes. A resolution that they've accepted and that we accepted going forward. Okay. 
Okay. Here is what we're going to do. So the question is, not the, well, the issue is, and what I've asked them to get with their BPA members, is in preparation for this meeting in the next few weeks, put down and write, what kinds of things do you think that we could do to work better together? Sure. What we've already given a couple here, which is quarterly minimum, joint meetings, maybe meeting back to back, maybe other things are gonna to come to your mind. We will bring those to the table and say, hey, you know, uh, Judy may say, let's, what, what do you say we do this? And what do you say we do that? That's gonna help. First thing is role definition. Do we all agree that we're here for the t rate and taxpayer? Yes. Second, what ways, what roles do we all have that we share, which is up there, sure. that you, you're gonna keep and that we keep, which is all of those. The next piece is going to be what communication and coordination issues do we need to do to be so that we are not going to flow it apart so that we are continuing to work well together dick is that sound about right Carrie, but I, thank you um, yes, you said you didn't know what to put on the agenda i think for me another thing that i would find interesting john and i do attend a lot of the bpa meetings mary and rick and jim can't because they are not retired yet i think it would be interesting for them to tell us what they are doing, what is current at the particular moment. They bought a new truck, they did this, we're having this. Oh. This lineman is coming to work, blah, 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 blah. This person retired. And the same so, for us to communicate to them. Is what, it not enough to read doing. their packets? Because I will say when I became mayor. But they don't get their packets. Yes, yeah, they do. Yes, they do. do. Uh -huh. Yeah, they sure uh -huh. do. Yep. So when I became mayor, that was one of the first pieces that I asked for from the utility because I knew as a council member, they got all of our stuff and we only got the first page of their agenda when i was a council member so we worked that out with the utility immediately and you guys are emailed their entire packet their human resource department agendas that that all comes to you in an email but there's still things that they do at the meetings that i don't well i think I sometimes they add the powerpoint presentations yeah. that maybe i i don't know do you know can you speak to that I guess it's not public concern time, but anyway, yes. there may be some things that they add when we get there. The, that does happen. But yeah. that that happens here yeah. when we amend an agenda that, too. But we try to send it out. I think that would be interesting in the agenda yeah. at different times. Yes. Uh, the, okay. They the, could, the, could bring sorry. us up to date on things that they have done. Sure. The agenda for the first joint meeting. The agenda for the first that. joint meeting. Not the ones <coughs> after that. The agenda for the first <coughs> joint meeting is going to be the issue of A, any questions or thoughts on proposal two of the combination. Two, that's not gonna take very long. Hold on, when you say combination, be very careful. No, the folding in of BPA, proposal number two. How's that? Was that the consolidation of BPA yes. into council yes. to make 10 for one yes. year and seven yes. or whatever? Yes, okay. that's correct. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Yes. The, sec uh, the second, the second agenda item, which is going to take the that vast majority of the time, is going to be the issue of single world, single purpose. Let's see, single purpose. What's our single purpose? Their input, ours. The next, the next piece is beyond single purpose. Is what are there role definitions that we? lanes that we need to stay in other than what's up there uh, i'm pointing to that current city governance structure mr butts i got it Thank okay you. and then the the third piece <laughs> is going to be com, um, what kind of coordination communication structures do we need to set up to assure going forward we're working in sync for the city of Bryan. and i think you need to check with dick and tom to i already have they, well i i will do that oh, no, i mean no. That wasn't fair because they no. had five minutes notice. That's correct. But the other piece of that, while we're talking about lanes, like I really do disagree that I was not in the meeting tonight because the charter allows me to be in all the discussion and deliberation. You know, so we had before work, before the fight. Yes, you could have been. I was no. told not to. No, right. yeah. I, it was my. She asked if she could join. My response was I'd already asked these two guys to come to talk with the two of us. I didn't want to make a surprise. The other piece was this was not a discussion nor a deliberation. This was an imp what, what did you get besides this? Thank you. That so is what discussion. The, that, that is not discussion. That is information to them. We did not go into any detail they about this. discussed that they would. Okay. Look what's happening right now. Look what's happening right now. 
I sent these, and it's, I'm so glad it's happening. These four individuals that I consider my teammates <laughs> have read it, but obviously had no discussion with me about you it. And they should. Not to. Yeah. Judy, <laughs> you please. There, do not discuss. I'm going to say that if you give me 13 <laughs> tenths of a second. As I put out in my email, this is not for discussion mm -hmm. or deliberation. This is just for your information. So I wanted them to be treated the same way that I was going to treat Dick and Tom. It is true that you're going to need to check with Dick and Tom what they would like to see added to the agenda. That is correct. That is correct. But I still understand why she couldn't be in the discussion, though. I thought I addressed that. I'll do I'm, that again. Still... I asked those two gentlemen to come with the understanding it was going to be meeting with you and I. Okay. I didn't want them showing up going surprise. Okay. I believe I've already had that okay. issue before. I, just... I tried to do this as fairly and as equitable as possible while attending to getting to a place where we could actually get together and talk. Yes, Mr. Long. You certainly may. Judy and Mary made a good point. Um, this is getting more and more confusing. Number one, um, I, I don't understand why it has to be this difficult. I don't think it, this it is will not be. for us to get together with you. This is about the city of Bryan. It's mm -hmm. not about BMU and it's not about city council. Right. I agree. I, this, is, this is what keeps me up at night. I, I have tried and tried and tried and I haven't quit. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to bring this council and BM and Board of Public Affairs together. Good. We're going to start working collaboratively right. for the betterment of yeah. Bryan, Ohio. Exactly. This is not doing, this is a distraction to Bryan Municipal Utilities, and I know it's a distraction to the city. Mm -hmm. It's unnecessary. Uh, I would like to, I, I beg council, uh, bring up your third reading. I mean, I, I don't know how you're gonna vote, and personally, I don't care. Let's get this, let's get past that. Let's get together. I, I, commend you for wanting to have joint meetings because that's my goal right we got to start working together yes this is starting to i look what just what you just seen transpire well, it's okay it's gonna you're gonna start seeing the div divisiveness mm -hmm. it's gonna get worse mm -hmm. yeah i think if this keeps oh, going sorry. the way it's going john this is going to get ugly before it gets better yeah and what we talked about and agreed to was the way this gets to a closure is for us to meet and come to an agreement going forward yeah so that's what you're saying is my response is going forward is we don't need to take a vote until we meet jointly and have an agreement and then we're going to vote and get rid of two things and say this is what we're going to do going forward so i we're going to get there and it, but it's going to take it sounds like a couple of weeks unfortunately well, I, before we can get the the group together but after the schedule after, it tomorrow morning at nine that we can <laughs> as soon as we can be scheduled for all of us to get together i think dick was saying there's a couple of people are going to be gone well there's, there was me a yeah. bunch of traveling yeah, yeah. On, so. but beyond that if we can get something in the next couple of weeks that we can meet i think i think we're talking an hour and a half kind of a thing just to bring to the table especially if people bring stuff to the table saying this is what i'd like to see as our single purpose this is what i'd like to see as it relates to what we do uh, and share together on a communication coordination i think it's going to be over at that point in fact i'm very confident that it will be well, i and still I will need instruction to put that ordinance Sorry. on the agenda for council to discuss at some point so when it, it would it be an ordinance or a resolution well the, the ordinance number 46 from 2019 yes, has right. not appeared on the agenda right. and will not until yes. i am told to put it back exactly on. no we once again for because the third time funny. i will i we will make a mo i won't do anything someone's going to make a motion when we are ready to accept whatever <clears throat> resolution we're going to accept we will make a motion to get rid of 46 2019 <coughs> and we will no longer discuss the don't want to use the word combination but don't want uh, we will not discuss the consolidation of bpa with with the council that'll happen okay 46 2019 
Is that it my was understanding the third reading, that sir. there has to be a third reading? I, yes. Well, and it, by law, and we can and we can do that. Okay. I third think reading? it would be no, good no, for no, everyone no. in this room that that was voted for or against and finished. Hmm? Yeah. Because it's just hanging out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that gives too much ability. Not that anyone on council would dream of doing this, but it gives too much ability for somebody to just on a special meeting at noon pass something. Do you want to do it that now? Can we do I don't it now? think we can. Can we do can, it now? I don't think. Can we take a vote? No. It's not on the agenda. Because it wasn't the agenda. And Lori would have to number and okay. read. And it has to be on the if agenda. we could do it now, we'd do it now, Dick. So if we can put it on the next agenda. Mayor, that, that would be, be a great thing. Let's let's How's that? go past that. That'll all take this. it off the agenda and give some relief. That'd be a great idea. <coughs> Perfect. Let's start going the other way. That's that's the whole. So that would be the March second meeting, if I'm correct. Yes. Yes. So on March second, we will uh, take a third reading. I believe we already know how that's going to go, and then we'll go forward. Because I cannot speak for them. I think we know how that's going to go. Do we need a also one? Well, let's just take that one first, <clears throat> and then let's let's get a time together. So, is that acceptable on yes. March? The, okay. We need to get a move on here. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm too. with you. I got a couple people that are dying to hire some people. Yes. So, but before, do we need to make a motion to that effect or I, no? Uh, to get a, to a joint a meeting. Date. I don't think you can make a motion with a special. Okay. Discussion, right? Just a discussion so piece. Can, but I want to make sure so we're okay with going ahead with the joint yep. meeting yep. and then at the next council meeting we'll deal with 46 2019. Yes. Is that, but, okay. yes. Just for clarification and I know it's been a long night but Thank in you. order to get that in the paper like once BMU and the city come up with a date together that mm -hmm. we think works for everyone mm -hmm. we can publish that in the paper yes. and that is the same as voting on a special meeting date? I would right now have a motion to set a special joint meeting with the okay. date to be announced. Oh, okay. I will make that motion. And I'll suck it. just said. <laughs> Mary? Oh, yes. sorry, Judy. Yes. <laughs> Mary. Yes. Did she say Karen? No, she said oh. Mary. Oh. Jim? Yes. Rick? Yes. John? Yes. Can you guys amend your agenda tomorrow to also make that same motion to set a special meeting to be determined, to be determined. for your BPA meeting tomorrow? Or have Dawn text me in the morning? Either, that might be better. Either or. <laughs> How can we do that without having a date? It's to be determined. To be determined. To be determined. By tomorrow, TBD. you'll have it. Okay. Is that? Just the meeting will not be before you take your vote, correct? No. no. I, well, I don't, we I don't, don't know. know. Well, you mean the joint meeting? It, I don't know, because we don't know when it could be. Does it? If we could vote now, we would, Tom. Right. We just we can't. We can't, because it was not on the agenda. Put on your next agenda, you're going to bring up the and vote. Yes, it's already March done. 2nd. March 2nd. Yes, sir. No, those are good questions. Bring them on. <laughs> the joint meeting may or may not be before that meeting. We don't get anywhere without <laughs> good, intelligent conversation. Are we good? I'm good. I'm good. good. Okay. So the next, where are we at? I, I've lost. The resolution authorizing. Uh, resolution authorizing fire chief of the city of Bryan to apply for grants for the city of Bryan. Yes, Lori. Lori, Lori, please read. Resolution number 11, 2020, a resolution authorizing the fire chief of the city of Bryan to apply for grants for the city of Bryan Fire Department. Good evening, council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, before you is the list of grants that we go out for uh, on an annual basis and it got past me at the first of the year that this hadn't been done yet and grants are now starting to get open so I got to get this done so I'm asking council to suspend the rules pass the resolution so that we can apply for grants this year I motion I like that yeah. speech. <laughs> you can go you got it I, I gave it to Jim Kozenpleck okay uh, so it's going in the minutes that's pretty sick. <laughs> I'll second. Jim? Yes. Rick? Yes. Judy? Yes. Mary? Yes. Sean? Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Mary? Yes. Rick? Yes. Jim? Yes. Judy? Yes. John? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. New Hire Street Department. Um, Mr. Engstrom. Good evening. Uh, tonight I'm asking your permission actually to hire two people the first one 
is Zachary Williams as a vehicle operator trainee for the street department. Want to do them both together? Can we do that? Uh, yeah. If you want yeah. to. I want to. Okay, Zachary Williams as a vehicle operator trainee. He will be on a one year probation pending the completion of his start date will be after I get his physical and background check information back, which his physical is Thursday. He did his background last week. So hopefully within the next week and a half or so he can start. Second one is Gregory Temple as a equipment maintenance mechanic. And he too will be on a one year probation and his start date is pending his physical and background. Yes. Yes. Make yes. motion to approve. I'll second. Mary? Yes. Judy? Yes. Jim? Yes. Rick? Yes. John? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. We'll do, sorry, do the new hire for engineering. Where's that at? Oh, the new hire for engineering, Mr. Wheeler? Do you have that 24 page PowerPoint, Carrie, that I need to I'm go not through? I'm pulling that up. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. This one. <clears throat> okay, in December, uh, when the budget was approved, you authorized me to uh, have an item in there for a cleanup Brian technician, and you also authorized, also, excuse me, authorized me to post that position. Uh, we've done that, and we only had actually one person apply, and it was Cliff Weigel, and with that, I am recommending that you hire Cliff Weigel for the position. Uh, the status form is in there. He'll be employed full-time at $13 an hour. And he's going to start Wednesday. I motion to approve. I'll second. Jim? Yes. Mary? Yes. Rick? Yes. Judy? Yes. John? Yes. We'll save the PowerPoint for another day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Annual Thank reports. You. Mr. Parks and Rec. Mr. Parks. Mr. Parks. Mr. Dominic. I really do have a 16. Slide PowerPoint. So <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, everybody's ready to go home. Uh, so I'll go quickly. Thanks, Dick. Um, in front of you guys should have our uh, 2019 annual report for the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, again, as you have a chance to go through it, if you have any questions, concerns, please feel free to call me at any point. Um, I'll try to answer anything I can. Um, my staff for the year. Um, Full-time staff, Bruce Wheeler is my assistant, Cindy Rao is my administrative assistant, um, Court Gosha, Greg Hartman, Tony Scantlin, Brandon Sullivan, and Holly Gambler um, are all very important parts to what we do. Um, they, make it, they make it work, and they work very hard to provide the facilities that we provide for our community. Um, quickly, uh, the next slide would be my 2019 Park Board members. Um, they will be, the, I know it's really small, I apologize. Um, they'll be the same for the 2020 um, calendar year. Um, Renee, Isaac, and Kelly Voigt will start their second three-year term. Um, so that gives you an idea if you have questions or concerns, park board related, um, those are the people that help us. They're kind of the eyes and ears um, and advisory board to Bruce and I to keep us moving in the right direction. Um, 2019 Tree Commission members, um, again, keep in mind this is 2019, so you'll see Valinda Lemon's name on there. Um, recently, you acted on her resignation, um, so we do have a vacancy on the Tree Commission that we will hopefully be filling very quickly here, um, but those were the people that helped us through the 2019 season with the trees. Um, after that, you'll find um, the estimates of participations in our different facilities activities all that kind of good stuff i'm going to kind of jump through till you get to the first pie graph which is our 2019 total facility usage uh, we estimated that we had around 167,000 people use our facilities um, probably the the shelters are the number one usage um, pools are very important obviously our community center is a big chunk um, so that gives you an idea of where they're used for classes, meetings, clubs, workshops, um, you name it. Um, again, their estimates, some of them report back to us and give us exact numbers. Um, some of them give us 
the best they can give us. So um, you flip to the next one, it shows you our five-year um, lines and then also a five-year average to go with that. Um, you may ask yourself, why is the number so much higher from 2018 to 2019? Um, there's two huge factors that play into the number. Um, number one, uh, we had a 25-year Imagination Station celebration um, that had a very large crowd um, in the fall at Imagination Station. Um, so that, that <coughs> factors into that. That's not something we have every year. Um, and then the other thing is we hosted the conference swim meet in 2019, uh, which if you're a swim team person, you know brings in thousands of people um, for a two-day event at Moore Pool. Um, again, that's not something that you'll see in our numbers every single year. Um, so next year you can expect our numbers to go down um, because we won't host those two events. Then what I do is I break everything apart from total facility usage down um, to the shelters and pavilions. Uh, we had about 27,000 users. Uh, JC Pavilion is our largest rental, um, followed by Moore. Um, so the pavilions in Moore Woods are very active, um, which you know we can completely redid this year. Again, when you flip to the next page, you'll find our line chart that goes with that. Again, the number is kind of fluctuated again because of swim meet and Imagination Station celebration. Um, so that's why that, that's so large. Um, if I can get my fingers through it. Next one you'll find is our pool activity. Uh, we have just over 24,000 people use our pool. Again, swim, swim team, swim lessons, rentals, practices, public swim, pool sales, pass sales, all that taken into account. Um, obviously, more is our number one user, um, which shouldn't come as a shock to you. Um, but uh, East End does very well, um, specifically with our new schedule of closing more pool on specific days and only opening East End. Um, we have learned that they will go to East End pool if that's the choice. So, um, again, you flip to the last one. It's fluctuated a little bit because of the conference swim meet. Um, but we did have a good year at the pools um, compared to our five-year average in the past four years. Um, next one you see on there would be our donation sheet. Um, a couple donations I'd like to, to bring to your attention is uh, Brian Girl Softball Association made a large donation for our batting cages. The Kiwanis Club made donation for Harmony Park playground equipment. Uh, Brian Rotary made a large donation for the Moore Park shelters. Uh, we did redid all the concrete floors out there. Parkview made a very large donation for our AEDs. Um, and Brian Area Foundation and multiple others, private donors, have made large donations to kind of kick off our pickleball project, uh, which will hopefully take form in the year 2020. Um, and the last sheet you have there is just simply some day-to-day -day operation things. Um, that my staff does on a daily basis um, and then some of the larger projects that we also did. Um, in your packet, not on the PowerPoint, but in your packet you'll also find our tree report, um, 30th year for Tree City USA for the City of Bryan, um, growth award for the 18th consecutive year. Um, so we're pretty proud of that stuff too. Questions? Not sure you're Sorry, it was so late. Oh, it's no problem. Parts Thank look you. great, Ben. If, yep. Yep. Thank you. Again, and if there, you have concerns, just give me a buzz. I'd be happy to answer anything I could. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks, Ben. Hello again. Now that Ben's done, I got about 72 slides we can go through. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try and keep my shirt because I've seen the yawns. Well, um, I have to go potty. Well, you know what? Go take your break really quick, Judy. No, okay. We don't want anyone uncomfortable up here. Or a wet seat. If you want to just go ahead and start with the slides instead of yes, reading the, the forefront, you guys can read that letter. Um, the department investigated 275 vehicle crashes, uh, which was up from 2019 or er, up in 2019. Officers issued 807 traffic citations, both adult and juvenile. Um, we lost some officers this year through retirement, uh, Michael Willis and Clifford, Clifford Weigel. Uh, 
retired, I became chief of police, and Jeremy Beers was promoted to sergeant. We are still down officers. We are still in the process and going to be coming back to you asking to get officers hired. But we, have, we did hire several people. Um, our pastor, uh, Michael Elkins, was hired. Matthew Sammons. And then there's a picture of Cliff in his retirement. We also hired Richard Rowe. And then dis dispatcher, which is part-time, is Jordan Waters and Daniel Nicholson. And then we can go on. Those are the employees. Um, you can read them real quick. We don't need to go through all that. Community relations. Paul Zawadney uh, does a ver variety of stuff. We're in St. Pat's. We do the trade show in Safety Town, and that's our community relations. Um, the hours differ depending on what kids come through the school. Our kids come through the PD, uh, through schools and stuff like that. It just depends on that. So the hours always fluctuate with what the community resource officer does. Uh, social media sites, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and we got our own web page, which is also in conjunction with the city of Bryan. Um, all that's being re-updated. Um, we're going to start working more with our social media uh, to get more current stuff. We got some younger dispatchers who have been trained in that in school, and they want to update our website, so we're going to let them try and update our website for us. Bicycle Patrol, you got to remember we are down in officers. Uh, Tony Plotz is in the school. So he's not out riding in the fall during the day. He's in the schools. Veers is on third shift right now. Doctors is on third shift. And Patrolman Zuck is on seconds. So the hours that they get to ride are limited. Um, plus, being down the staff, we can't really have them on bike. And then I have a call on the other side of town where we need to respond real quickly. It's just not easy to be done with the bike. So the bike hours have been limited. Chaplain, once again, uh, Mr. Elkins is now our chaplain after uh, our chaplain passed away in December. We do in-service training. Uh, we were contracted with Owens Community College uh, as part of the consortium. They keep us updated on anything we need to do with that. It's pretty reasonable. Um, they charge us by size of the police department. Since we are a smaller department, we have a smaller fee to pay for that. But we utilize that as much as we can. It saves us from sending officers down to London or to Richfield through OPADA. Uh, we received 781 hours of training this year. Um, but that doesn't include firearms and various stuff that we do through the year just at the office. Um, uh, 11 vehicles, seven marked, two unmarked, and then one school car, one unmarked uh, captain car, one chief car. There's a breakdown for the miles we drive. Uh, 10 cents per mile is pretty good for the cars and we're not gentle on the cars. So when we're getting that good of mileage, and everything else like that. I don't think we're doing that bad on maintenance. I'm sorry, Chief. Dispatch, um, some of these numbers are askew. We did get a new recorder. It didn't capture. Our numbers were not given uh, properly, but the 911 calls are down from 18. Something you can see the patterns right there. Um, we're still taking calls every day. It's in the front forefront of your uh, letter for me. Uh, we're doing about 25 calls for service for the officers, but they're getting 911 calls, just like we uh, congratulate Mackenzie tonight, what she handled. Stuff like that happens all the time, and it could just be a hang up on a 911 call. We have to ping it. We have to do certain things. So just because we get, only get one call, it may take several hours of work. So just because we only get a couple calls a night does not mean the officers are not working. Traffic enforcement. Traffic enforcement, I believe, countywide is down. Um, but we're still in the zero fatals, which is a good thing. Um, the citations by enforcement, we still do traffic enforcement, don't get me wrong, but I think it's down countywide. Um, there's our numbers, 275 for the year. And investigation, non-injury, and injury. So that's still a lot of accidents. It keeps the guys busy. BAC, um, we are the only one in the county. Everyone comes through the, the PD to get tested. Uh, 47 were administered by our officers in the, here in the city, and there was 103, 133 tests countywide. That includes OSB, all your villages, and the sheriff's office. There's the breakdown. The K-9 unit, um, Sage, is out there. He's training uh, once or twice a month. Um, I, he's got more hours than that um, in training 
just by stuff he does. Uh, Sage is getting older. We are going to enter into a discussion with you guys here shortly. Um, we may be in the process a, of retiring Sage due to some of his physical ailments. So that's just something to look forward to here in the next coming year. <laughs> the detectives, we're down to one detective. Uh, she did 64 investigations, uh, close to 500 hours, 300 hours in grand jury, and she did 40-hour hour training uh, in Cleveland, I believe, for death investigation. Um, she does have some other trainings that she didn't put down there. Like I said, once we do firearms, if they have to do taser, if they do CPR, all those certs come back into play and we keep on renewing our certifications. There's the investigations broke down as to what she did. Um, last year we did have a murder. It's still going on. It's not been adjudicated. So that did take quite a bit of time. We are still members of the Walter Aaron Cox Task Force. This is their stats for the year for Williams County. They uh, had 180 complaints and investigated 123. Um, search warrants, they did 21, 90 people arrested, 129 charges. They did a RICO case uh, involved residents of Bryan and every other jurisdiction around. So if you've been reading the paper, you've been seeing the man unit is doing a lot of stuff. They do do a lot of stuff in Bryan. You don't always see it and you don't always hear about it. That's about as much as I can say some of the cases, but they do a lot more work than what's put in the paper. So I'd like you guys to be aware of that. And there's how they're broken down. Um, the felony ones, felony twos, felony threes, they did 22 of those. And fentanyl is the big killer out there. You guys have all seen the paper. You just touch it, get into your system. It's what makes everything shut down. Uh, they did uh, two felony threes on that, a felony four, and nine felony fives. So the drugs are here. The methamphetamine's still here. Um, the F1's probably a manufacturing. I don't know exactly what the case was, but I'm assuming the, manu the F1's a manufacturing because that's what we charged when I was there. There they are again. <laughs> Sorry. There are police reserves. Uh, we only really have two right now, which is uh, Franzdorf and Nyhart. They are the SOs that are paid for at the school. Um, they're, they help us out in times of need. They helped us out with the funeral when we had the military come in, the funeral we had, they helped us with that. And they do offer times here and there, but they are not mandated at this point to do the 96 hours as a reserve calls for service. Um, we are down. We had a big spike in 2017 and we are decreasing. So here's the times of days. Um, we're pretty much steady. Everything's pretty much stayed the same. Fridays in uh, 18 were a big day and they're Tuesday, Friday, it's about the same. But we, if you look, we're pretty much steady except for Sunday. And there's by the hours, there's a big spike at 4 p.m. Once again, Bryan Police Department, uh, we are looking to fill our ranks. So if anybody's out there watching this and they are eligible to be a police officer, they need to get in touch with us. In touch with us. We will do all that we can. Um, it's a rewarding job. It's helping everybody out. So we do need help just like the fire department. And once we get those ranks filled, all those numbers will be changed. Somebody that wants to be a police officer, do they need to be OPATA certified before they come to you? They do not need to be OPATA certified. It's a preference. It gives them points on the test. They need to be 21. They need to pass a civil service test and a physical that's in that civil service test. But they, at this point, they do not need to be civil or they do not need OPATA certified. Hmm. Any other questions? No? So we're going to start the slideshow over? Yep. <laughs> There's three or four I missed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Quickly around the room, any city workers, BPA, huh? uh, media? Yeah, okay. And this is not public comment time. This is just for either city employees, BPA, and council. Yep. Uh, thanks for the presentations. 
short and sweet. Yep. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That won't be quite as short. Um, I just wanted to congratulate Mackenzie on a great job. Uh, uh, we had a little presentation one time on all the jobs or, or the job of dispatcher and how involved that is, and that's an amazing job. And and uh, congratulations to her. Uh, welcome to all of the new employees, Zach Williams, uh, Greg Temple, and welcome back to Cliff Weigel. Uh, ben, I say this every year, your crew does a great job on the parks. Uh, couldn't be prouder of uh, the way that they look and the, and the facilities and everything. And uh, same way with the police department, kind of the typically <coughs> quiet uh, enforcers out there. Sometimes they come whistling past my house, but usually it's pretty quiet. So uh, thank you for everything that you do. Uh, again, congratulations to Mackenzie. That's quite an honor. Um, and that speaks for our police department that they trained her well enough that she is comfortable in, in her job. Also, wonderful reports tonight. Thank you very much. Good job to the street department for the, when we had the snowstorm, they did a wonderful job cleaning things off. So that's it. I'm going to just ditto what they said rather than repeat everything, uh, <laughs> except I am going to add one thing. Um, on behalf of the Kiwanis Club, Ben, we thank you. You made every, the donations that we did, very streamlined, very easy. Um, you were great to work with. And the Kiwanis want to make sure that I publicly announce that, but thank you for what you did. And also thank you, um, Ch Chief Chapa, for your report, excellent. Um, other than that, I'm done. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Lori? No, sir. Rhonda? No, sir. Mayor? Yeah, I missed this two weeks ago, so I'll be very quick. Uh, mayor Johnson always said it's not so much the mayor, but the people that you work with every day that make the city great, and I echo that. We have amazing department heads, amazing employees. <coughs> so we've now had four <coughs> annual reports. They've all been very well done. We'll have a couple more to follow. But I want to go on the record that I appreciate all of you. Um, the two ladies up here as well put in a lot of hours. Um, taking notes and keeping us all legal. So I just appreciate everyone in the city that makes sure that the residents are taken care of every day. So thank you. Yes, and I agree with uh, uh, everything that's been said in terms of the reports. Thank you and um, uh, for the accommodation that was given is certainly well deserved. I appreciate that as well. And everyone's response. I, always, I really appreciate uh, people coming and responding as it relates to Dora. I, I always appreciate the uh, discussions that go on uh, and that are done publicly so that people can hear and uh, express their opinions one way or another on certain items and especially for uh, BPA I'm, um, meeting with them prior uh, just to make sure that that we were kind of on the same page going the same direction um, and appreciate their uh, willingness to uh, meet and see what we can do in terms of uh, going forward for what's best for the city of Bryan and that was very helpful so thank you for all that and at this point I will accept a, or whatever I will I'll motion motion, motion to for an adjournment I'll second Here. yes Jim. yes Here. yes Judy. yes yes everyone shut your mic off so the way doesn't have to do it